Okay, finally, guys, thank you for standing by. We made it. All the travails and back stuff that just happened, we're not going to bore you with the details, but the woman of the hour has arrived. Marisa, how are you doing, young lady? Hey, Doug, I'm doing well. Thank you. And thank you for, I guess, putting up with the technological um, differences. It was, oh, you know, nice. but, but we, we figured it out, man. We did. We prevailed. <laughs> Do you guys um do you guys mind having the chat over there or we we have different versions we can hit up or whatever maybe let us know what you like this is new software so I'm just trying to find out how to involve the community and make it look okay too so let me know what you guys put a 1 in the chat if you like this and put a 2 in the chat if you like this one Oh my god oh, guys I can you have see no some idea of it. I, and I'm expecting oh man I know it'll be it is going to be a mixed bag of nuts there's going to be some that are like yeah you're cool and like I, I'm just so used to like, so nothing's going to be a surprise, you know, for those of you thinking you're going to like send a message where I'm going to be like, Oh my God, no. I mean, every, everything's good. You know, criticisms, non-criticisms making fun of me. I, I'm just like I'm one of those chicks that's like, just say whatever you have to say. And it's, it's fine. You know, me too. Me and Marissa go way back many years and we've been kicked out of every popular sp facebook group including outer <laughs> banks sp's rs etc we uh we're the ones that what don't conform marisa or just i don't know i don't pretty I much mean, and i look those at, i look at those as badges of honor me you too. know Fucking how man. people collect uh medals of uh fowler i'm like hey man each each one of these groups i get kicked out of is like that's a badge of like, you know, non-conformance and telling people essentially to, are we allowed to say the F word on your sure, anything show? You want. Oh, okay. Yes. I know sometimes YouTube is sensitive about that. It doesn't matter. It's not monetized. You don't have to worry um, about anything. Yeah, there's, there's been many um, Scientology Facebook forums, as you know, and... Yeah, I used to be a part of all of them, and and ultimately I've been kicked out of every one of them. So, for just asking questions and finding certain things to be shady and weird, and you know something I I, I knew about you. Well, you've always been someone pretty quiet and under the radar, and I I, I never knew that you grew up in Scientology till. Yeah couple of years ago, even though, even though you and I were Facebook friends for in ta chatting with each other for at least over a decade, yeah. I had no idea. And then when you told me, I think you and one other person kind of laid that bomb on me where I'm like, wow, but I, I could, I know it's legit, you know, because I know the feeling where growing up in Scientology, it's, it's not something you really want to like openly broadcast, um, depending on your, your circumstances, you know? Yeah. And when you told me that, I was like, holy shit, like, like I had no idea about this, about you. And then the fact that you really didn't want to assimilate to, you, you, just, you just have always been your own, like, drifting self, the drifter. Doug, I tried to assimilate like you did. Marisa, I tried to assimilate like you did, but in the, I think you lasted less in the Outer Banks than I did. By the way, guys, we weren't planning on jumping into any of this stuff we were just going to talk like we talk on the phone man and just have a casual conversation not least because we had a lot of tough technical dif difficulties making this happen and um we just want to keep it low key but if you guys don't know who marisa is do you want to start out my friend like how you went from timid to the badass that you are today that couldn't last <laughs> in outer banks <laughs> oh my goodness well it's not, it, it's so funny because, um, you know, for, for those of you that have been following the anti-Scientology scene, or as you call yourselves, the Scientology watchers and the never ends, um, something, you know, you, you, you all need to realize that the anti-Scientology movement, this has been going on for about three decades. 
It, it's it, this did not just start in 2017 with the aftermath show. Although I do credit Leah Remini's show for bringing global awareness about Scientology. Yep. Um, I remember being a little kid, you know, like in, in the first and second grade being like, I, I wish anyone on planet earth knew what Scientology was because it, it was a really lonely existence. I, I, I was born and raised in Scientology. My parents were like die hard L. Ron Hubbard fanatics, you know, yeah. big time. So even though I wasn't in Sea Org, but there is the other aspect of Scientology, which is the public aspect of it. And that makes up like 85% of Scientologists 90%, are public I would say. Scientologists. 95%. Yeah, that's right. And then there's the Sea Org, which I mean, there, if, if you are born into Sea Org and you have to experience that, like I, I can't even imagine because I, I didn't experience that, um, and I can't imagine experiencing it. That's horrible. Where to imagine it was already shitty enough as it was being a public Scientology kid growing up in a full fledged Hubbard Dianetics this and that upbringing. But to imagine where Sea Org is all you know, I, and I am always up front. I'm like, man, my story pales in comparison to to those people. You know, but, you know, I, I, I guess I had a bit of a, I don't want to say an advantage, but both of my grandparents were devout Roman Catholics. Um, everyone on both my mother and father's side, they're all Roman Catholics, except for my parents, my mom and dad. They were the, the kind of drifters that, you know, in the San Francisco Bay Area looking for something besides Catholicism and at the time in the 70s like San Francisco Bay Area that was the hub for spiritual I don't know new age thinking and all these weird eclectic groups and so yeah I was born in I literally was a seed I hate to say it I was instead of the seed of Chucky I was the seed of Scientology what do you mean by that <laughs> They can make a horror movie. Well, you know, you do you you know child's play Chucky. You know the yeah. So there's the bride of Chucky and the seed of Chucky. Okay, I didn't. Where see he that one. like reproduces with his doll friend, and they have this little offspring, the seed of Chucky. So I was right. just joking. I'm like, I was at the seed of Scientology. Weren't you the only one that <laughs> the only kid in Scientology out in Arizona? Well. Actually, let's back up, Marisa. Your parents were hippies, right? And they got in at the San Francisco org, right? Uh, yeah, I was born in Hayward, California, but mm -hmm. we moved to Arizona when I was three years old. And it was supposed to be just like a hit and run where we go to pick up my half brother and sister, which my half sister ended up being the executive director of uh, Scientology here in Phoenix, Arizona for like 12 to 15 years. They didn't even meet me until they were like 13 years old. So they didn't meet you? Yeah, it, it's, just like, it's just a weird story. So, like, we have the same mom but different dads. And my mom, when she was on her spiritual route of self-discovery, um, she, like, my grandmother, you know, God rest her soul, the devout Roman Catholic. Like, I'm half, like, my mom is Portuguese and my dad is, is Mexican. So... But both of them, they're like Roman Catholic. Everyone in my family are Roman Catholics. My parents are just the oddballs that went off the deep end looking for weird shit. So they found Scientology and um, yeah, what for whatever reasons they in, like they ended up marrying each other and then I was born. So I was, I was literally like a product of, that's why I said I was like seed of Chucky, but seed yeah. of, you got to watch that movie. You know, I haven't seen it. About. I only saw the first one. <laughs> I'll put it on the list. Yeah, he has one. It's like the bride of Chucky. Um, um, and then he has a little baby, Chucky. He has a, a son named Shitface. Is this the television show or are we talking no. silly movie? Okay. Child's play. <laughs> I know, but didn't they do a television show on it recently too? Anybody? Oh in the man, chat? I haven't heard of that, but if they I did, thought there was I, a new I one. I need to watch it. Um so 
my parents, you know, I, I, man, it's such a like weird story that I just don't even know how to describe it. How about, how about didn't your, so your mom and your dad get into it in San Francisco ish. They're hippies. Basically they got into it because they're dreamers. Yeah. They were spiritual. Yes. Spiritual window shoppers. Um, and I'm a big fan of, I don't know if you've heard of Jiddu Krishnamurti, but he was kind of like this like Indian philosopher and he calls it spiritual window shopping. And I read about it. I'm like, dude, that's, that's exactly what my parents were. They were spiritual window shoppers. And I think that era of the whole hippie yeah. era is, it was a lot of spiritual window shoppers and just, just yep. jumping from, you know, group to group, cult to cult, cult, whatever it was about Scientology, you know, tickled their fancy. Um, so, but yeah, my upbringing, I remember as being as young as my earliest remember uh, my earliest memories of Scientology were like five years old. So whenever I would have a cold, whenever I would stub my toe, anything, it was like touch assist. And I hated those damn things. Me man. too. Like, my dad used to do them to me all the time. And I've heard a couple of people say, Oh, I love those. Those were like, the mo those were so relaxing. I'm like, dude, it's like Chinese water torture. Like someone poking you, like, feel my finger? Not only that, it's creepy, feel Marisa. My finger? <laughs> it's strangers doing that. I had my own dad do it. It felt like, it felt invasive. Like it's breaking down the boundaries. I hated Extremely that freaking thing. Extremely invasive. And to this day, I um, if somebody is like next to me, it kind of does that Joe Biden creepy call crawly thing. Like, oh my god! Like, I just want to like. It's just a weird, literally almost like a PTS thing thing. And I get yeah. really like claustrophobic feel, like feeling. I don't like people getting very close to me, and like me neither just bodily contact or like you know it's it it. it just infuriates me so any little thing from the time i was five years old any ailment every time i would sneeze um because you know if you have a cold or anything in scientology they think you're your pts to something so you're you did something bad the reason you're sick is because you did something bad you have a secret you you're have connected a, to a suppressive person yeah and so continually from the time i was like five years old you know I, I just remember like having the flu and my mom would be like feel my finger and then and, and just her being so close to me yeah and so i would be like creepy. mom i i feel like i'm gonna throw up i don't like this because it just gave me this sense of being like boxed in you know yes and, and then she'd be like Oh well, that that's good. That means you're running something out. So the fact that I was becoming extremely infuriated and like claustrophobic from having someone breathing down my neck, poking it, feel my finger. Yeah, God damn it! Feel my finger. Back, man. I and I'm like, no, I don't. Like, I really don't like this stuff. And you I would tell your you would tell your parents that. Yeah, your I would mom? tell my mom. Really? Yeah, I would tell her from. I'm like, mom, I don't wow. feel good. Like, this is making me nauseous. But in a Scientologist parent's mind, yeah. they think they're helping you. And if yeah. you say any reaction you have of sickness or negative feelings, in their minds, they're like, wow, this means that we're, we're accomplishing something. The fact that you're feeling like throwing up and feeling classroom. What turns it on, turns you're, it off, Marisa. You're running something out. and So evil. So I had to go... Shit. Yeah, it's just, it's, oh my God, that was the, the earliest memories of that. I Like I said, I refer to it as Chinese water torture, like touch assist. And anybody who feels, who says they find touch assist pleasurable, I, I don't know, man. You might as well go hook, stick hooks in your back and do human life suspensions. It's just, that's So like, I take it you still don't practice the tech outside? You're not an indie Scientologist? You gave it up? <laughs> no. Um, hey, that, that leads actually to a really good question by philosophy. Do you think that it's easier for a public Scientologist to break free as opposed to those raised in the Sea Org? Um, most definitely, yeah. Because I, I have a lot of friends who were raised in the Sea Org, and they tell mm -hmm. me their stories, and I, I, I just can't even, I, I mean, my hat goes off to them, and I always, I, you know, I'm like, dude, you're like, 
Surge's story. Yeah, I would so say is like the most bad. horrific story I have ever oh, heard of, and and he's like the most I think underrated. Yeah, and he actually is trying to do something about all of this, and he's one of the few second gens that is really looking at it from. It, 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 he's like, man, this is human trafficking. Yeah. This is like he cuts he straight to the down. point. And and I know he's misunderstood. And by who? Know, but I understand him perfectly. Is he getting? I understand too? him too. But you know, people. He's very intelligent. In and no you shit. know, my story, honestly, and I've talked to him before. Like my story is exactly like his, but it's the flip side. Like I never learned how to audit. Mm -hmm. But I was you the, were the little five year old pig kid. getting audited. I was the five year old being audited on. So the older people, because you know, in Scientology they don't look at children as you know, we're we are adults in little children bodies. So I'm five years old getting like Johannesburg sex checks, you know, where they're telling you like, Have you ever had sex with dead bodies? Have you ever had sex with um uh, you know, animals. Are yeah. you a communist? And I remember being like five years old being asked this shit, and it really was for no good reason other than it were it was auditors at the Phoenix org. Our org went up to I believe it was grade two. You can learn to be an auditor up to grade two because we were a smaller org, and they were just looking at me as like even though I'm five years old in their mind. I'm like a 500 year old man. Like I'm this like 500 year old man. That's, you know, I was born into Scientology and this is what they tell you. Mm -hmm. Um, the fact I was born into Scientology means I'm so intelligent. I picked my parents and the reason why no one knows about Scientology except for me is because I'm one of the chosen ones. I'm one of the most highly intelligent elite spiritual beings that the fact I, I would even be born into a Scientology yeah. family, I am like this just savant and I should thank myself. I, I, I'm just like, I can't even believe we're talking about this, Marisa. What the fuck was I thinking? Like how it's like two different worlds. You're bringing back so many memories about how fucked up my childhood really was. And I think I'm in denial a lot because every time I talk to people, man, I forget how fucked up that shit was. It was just normal. Touch assist, being PTS, being a, who doesn't want to hear that they're a, you know, infinite being and, but it desensitizes the crap out of you from your parents. And that's exactly the way my dad and shit taught me. And I, I couldn't ever have any, get, have any compassion or get through to him because of that fucking fundamental belief that you just said, which is ridiculous. I mean, it's child abuse to say that to somebody to say that you're not remember Laura. Did you see that Laura FM, um, clip on over the rainbow where she's trying to talk to her fucking father? Trying to oh, yeah. talk some and, sense and into and him that's, when she's. Mm -hmm. That's, I honestly, I know that's a controversial video because it proves what complete kooks Karen and Jeffrey Augustine are. But I didn't say it, guys. Marisa did. Dude, I am like, hey, man, it's all balls out. Like, I don't make any secrets about those fucking people. And they know, they know how I feel about them and they've never helped me. Conversely, I have zero sympathy and I, I, I have no desire to help them. And and I found it, like it's just funny this feeling of sort of like retribution because you get these very I like the way the video was because I believe it was a Mexican or Spanish producer Jeremy Pixito I believe and yeah and I think maybe he's even Portuguese but they just have a very different style of cinematography yeah. um, like my my favorite movie one of them is Pan's Labyrinth oh that's a good and, movie. And and they just Dark. have Mexican and Latin American producers. They're they're just very abstract. I mean, look at yeah. Salvador Dali, for instance. Their artistry and everything is just different. So I love the way that the producer of Over the Rainbow depicted Karen and Jeff, these out of touch, delusional, stereotypical, wealthy Hollywood Scientologists. And then you have Lauren, who is going the to opposite all this of that up shit and people yeah. don't you know yeah people don't get the message of the movie i i got the message and i loved it i'm like dude this is like the best anti-scientology movie i've ever seen and of course karen and jeff do not like it because 
it, it they're so used to this echo chamber they live in yeah. but dude you guys want to go you both karen and jeff want to have movies produced to the mainstream world you you do both look like a couple of fucking nut jobs and i'm sorry and i have no problem saying that because like i said they've been nothing but very demented and manipulative manipulative yep. towards me and people i know i don't care about outing them or saying my opinions and again it's my it's it's it is my opinion and i know what they've done to friends of mine which is not cool what people need to realize is the entire belief system of Scientology is auditing, you know? And I think like you described recently, there's two parts of the bridge. There's the, the part of the bridge where you learn how to become an audit, auditor. And then there's the part of the bridge where you spend shitloads of money to receive the auditing to go up the me. bridge of spiritual enlightenment. You know, you can't escape auditing. That That is like the soul basis of unless you join staff marisa or you're in the sea org then you can just work 24 7 and receive only sec checks and shit to keep you in order but they don't move the, <laughs> those people up the bridge you know generally speaking. no i know like my sister she was the ed of the phoenix org for um man a solid almost 15 years she my did she get out marisa did she get out is she still in she's been out but it, it's weird it's 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 like a secret you know i i see her at like family gatherings and it, it's like this top secret you know like no one talk it's like this taboo subject which drives me fucking crazy um I, my sister it, when when you grow up around somebody who has been really brainwashed and just on another chart of like, I, I don't understand her at all, man. Some people need to be led. And I, I always tell people, I'm like, if, if my sister did not join Scientology, she would be in a freaking convent right I now. Understand. Like she, she would be a nun. And, you know, some people are like that. They just have, I, I don't understand it, but, me neither. I remember when my sister used to drive me to the org when she was the ED and, and she would use me a lot. She's like, hey, you tell my parents, Marisa needs this and that as her next step on the bridge. And even though I didn't want to do it, she was the ED. So she got a big chunk of change, a commission for me doing things I didn't want to do. And I remember having to drive 45 minutes from our house to the org she would pick me up and she would not say one word to me she and she would turn it on to golden era production music oh lord like she would not listen to normal music wow. it was nothing but golden era music and it was just so very surreal when you grow up around someone like that that's like so insanely brainwashed that you're like wow like and there was nothing I could say to her. Like, I and I tried. I used to try to talk to her and say, "Hey, so how are things going?" And she would just give me a one-word answer, like, "Oh, they're fine, they're good." And then she would just turn on the radio and he'd be like, "Key to life." Like, I'm not joking. Like, she would just jam out to "Key to life." Um, we stand tall. I don't. I knew you were gonna say that. Are you fucking kidding me? And then I'm, I'm not just... kidding, dude. Like, fucking. And, then and that's you... probably. That's probably my favorite song of the whole. It's pretty age. catchy. It's catchy. It's, it's got I'll at least a it. harmonic tune so. to it. So, but everything yeah. else. Oh, we can like, play that, Marisa. Do you we remember Key to Life? Like, Key to Life? No, no, I didn't see that one. Let me see if I can actually There's pull that There's a song one up. called Key to Life. No and they way. sing it so, like, passionately. Like, Key to never Life. never heard that one. Life. <laughs> and of course, L. Ron <laughs> Hubbard's. Uh, what the hell is that song he does? Um, there's a whole album I know, of this thank shit, you Marisa. For listening. Oh yeah, let me see if I can. Do you pull remember that. that? Thank you for listening. Song. Oh, what about Dougie Fresh? Did you ever see the Dougie Fresh video? You're you reminding me. Of I remember of Dougie videos. Fresh because I grew up listening to you know rap music, and I was surprised when Dougie Fresh when I found out he was a Scientologist, and I'm like, oh man, like what a fucking bummer. But I gotta pull up that. That's one what Scientology does. They prey upon. Um, 
people that they think are artists that are vulnerable. Like yeah. I remember my head almost flipped when I found out Scientology was joining forces with the nation of Islam. Isn't that crazy? Farrakhan took That's a payout crazy. for that though too. Farrakhan gets a kickback on all the people that he got in there. That's just a money thing for him. Cause it's the it's most unusual. Crazy. It doesn't make any sense, right? It's just absolutely. It makes insane. absolutely no sense, but I, I've kind of became friends with when I went to flag down, uh, there were a couple of, members of the nation of islam that showed up and that's a very you know a lot of people are afraid of those guys yeah no but, shit like i i grew up around you know like i said to in one of my videos like i did i, I even though i grew up in scientology i grew up in like a kind of like a rougher neighborhood around gangbangers and stuff so i was actually fascinated about the nation of islam guys and i just like i'm like dude you have to tell me like how is this possible? And there are certain people afraid of them because of who they are. But I just like, you got to tell me like what happened. And I just, but, and we are still friends like me and the, you know, nation of Islam activists, people, they know who they are They're And they, they, they know L. Ron Hubbard is full of crap and really, but they, Oh, there's people that are definitely against it. Right. Marisa that are not down with that. Yeah, na the the Nation of Islam members that they kind of left Nation of Islam as soon as it started getting involved in Scientology, and I'm friends with a couple of the main guys, um, and they're very good people. But it's fascinating hearing. It's like who would imagine Nation of Islam and Scientology would could, like intermingle? But I guess Louis Farrakhan, in a roundabout way, sort of had a L. Ron Hubbard-ish side to him. And I think he realized like, hey, I, I can implement this upon my members yep. and make a lot of money. And and ultimately, like that's what happened. It's, it's really weird because I know from growing up in Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard was a very racist bastard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was not very keen on the black community. And he did not like Christians either. That's what's so funny is Aaron Hubbard was not a fan of Christianity. I mean, if, if you grew up in Scientology, you're led to believe that Christians are stupid. In any any people who believe in any type of organized religion are stupid. That that's what Aaron Hubbard preached. So, and all of his stuff, you know, he had this like obsession with South Africa, and you know, it, it gets it goes down a wormhole that I didn't really get into but i just i do know that he, l ron hubbard was not keen on certain minority groups of people that's why when when he did the nation of islam connection i um yeah it threw my head for a spin i, I, I know i wonder it. if they read those materials and they they know how much of a racist he is it's all spread throughout his literature so i don't know how they justify that in their heads well uh, I think, sadly, from what I see, it seems like it's predominantly women Nation of Islam members that are doing the auditing drills. And I think, I don't know much, you know, but L. Ron Hubbard, it's, it's like the whole thing is they, they, prey on, they prey upon people that are gullible, that are easily led. And there is a faction of people that are easily led, like my half-sister, for instance. Um, yeah. I don't understand, you know, it, it, it's just deep shit that you get into, you know? And so, you know, grow, growing up in, in Scientology, you know, I, I would come home and everything was like over and hover 24 seven, but. Didn't you say they would even play at the top volume while you would have to go into the bedroom and try to get away from them? Oh, Ron Hubbard yeah, lectures the at the word. top of their. Like it was music or something for four hours straight and you couldn't get away from it as a child? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, you know, most people who grow up in Scientology, your parents usually have an encyclopedia. I, I don't want to say encyclopedia. No. A, a freaking library. My dad had the ultimate library, Marisa. When I got back into it, I resisted it up until my 20s. And then when I got into it, I stayed at my parents' house for a while and every day... <laughs> He had all the lectures, exteriorization and the something of space. I mean, he had fucking everything, all the red volumes, all the green volumes. And it was three huge walls just full of shit. And what she's talking about right there, any Scientologist uh, 
that is that is worth the is worth the name has such a library right yeah my mom had your freaking mom had all that oh my god she had like what is that called the saint hill briefing course she actually she gave it away to roy robble right his name roy robles, roy robles, robles. But now a crazy indie scientologist from last time she I gave saw. it away to him i'm like mom you could have fucking sold that shit yeah. for i don't know maybe 200 bucks but yeah even though, even though it cost fifteen thousand, yeah it's but that's like an encyclopedia of yeah like, all the red volumes she she was just yeah she has the red ball volumes the green volumes the saint hill briefing course all lectures. this stuff and honestly sometimes i think about as, as much as a lunatic that i think elron hubbard was i honestly don't know if anyone on planet earth has written as much as that dude has like he has the guinness book of world's records dude most... he has to have written like 50 million pages of shit um like so yeah my parents used to sit there and uh i remember being a little kid and the and you know this is in the 80s and they would pop in this like tape of l ron hubbard um because you know his cassette tapes back then so they would like put in a cassette tape and 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 then i knew i'm like oh time for me to go in my bedroom and i would just hear l ron hubbard's thunderous voice for four hours straight and they would listen to his whole cassette tape lectures. And, and, and my mom and my dad, and I would just hear L. Ron Hubbard talking all this just weird lunacy. And then he would just break into these like thunderous laughs. And then my parents would start laughing. And I remember being in my room and I'm like, I don't understand what's so funny about this, but whatever. Like at the time, you know, Corey Feldman and Kurt Cameron were like these hot teenage boy actors, you know, new kids on the block. So I am like getting it. I'm like, I want to listen to my new kids on the block CDs. And um, oh, I'm just like getting up for a second. That's but, all right. While you, while you do that, we'll take a break and we'll throw on some of this gibberish that we actually, your mom blasted around the house, right? This is, thank you for listening, Marisa. Check oh my out. gosh. No. Uh, when was the last time you heard this? If it gets too stimulative, just let me know. I'll turn it oh, off. I'm no, not even sure I can take it. Me. I think it's Are you sure? Funny. Wait until you listen to this. It's this Yeah, this is pretty catchy, man, right? Put a, one in, put a one in the chat if you like it, two if it's dog shit. <laughs> Thank you for listening. This is Hubbard's voice, and I think it's one of the only songs that he actually sings. And like a typical narcissist, he thought his voice was like the most incredible thing, and he would write down in his hypnotic uh, diaries, you know, about how he could sing any tone. Check this out. I write just for you, <laughs> but others hearing this may find things they would argue. I do not sing what I believe, I only give them fact. If they believe quite otherwise, it still will have impact. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, the singing sucks, but the jam's pretty cool, right? Well, it's got like that jazz, you yeah. know, kind of yeah. jazzy freaking tune to it. <laughs> but, I've been oh, over like, forever, by the way. Um, <sighs> it's, it's so oh funny, God. but. That's what I mean. I'm like, this guy, like, L. Ron Hubbard, I I don't know. Like, I knew, I, I think I had an advantage, which I know I had an advantage. And I, I am very good friends with a lot of, like I said, a lot of people who grew up in Sea Org. And by no means am I even comparing to what I, my, my story is nothing compared to so many people like, like surge it's really it, not uh it doesn't undermine I, your trauma though uh marissa because um i understand but i do you want to tell some of what you went through i mean you already talking about you know you grew up in a totally scientology family and it fucked you up uh as a child so please don't under 
to your trauma. I mean, we're not comparing dicks, you know, and trauma and who hurt, you know, who hurt. Yeah, what? I just hate, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I they definitely like, fucked you up. I, you know? Yeah, I just don't, I don't know. I mean, I always have this like attitude of like, hey, man, there's so much worse than, than I know, what happened to me that um, what happened to me was kind of shitty and fucked up. But yeah, it like, was. I guess interestingly, like I, I did have an advantage because my being that I grew up with everyone in my family that, that they were all like Roman Catholics and then my friends growing up in school were all Christian. I, literally, I was the only one that was like this weirdo not growing up in this. I was literally taught my, my parents kept me away from any ideas of Jesus Christ any ideas of the bible um but but my grandmother my portuguese grandmother who was like very into god and stuff and like i I remember one time i was like five years old and i was at her house and i was like grandma do you know that um dog spells god backwards and i just it wasn't saying it i just thought it was cool you know like what is it called when something spells the same thing i don't know but i have no idea like grandma do you know that dog spells god backwards and the next thing i know like if you have a portuguese or like italian relative like my grandma was like oh my god what the hell is your mother teaching you and and then i just you know i hear she calls my mom and she's like cut like my grandmother never cussed and she's like, what are you raising my granddaughter in? Do you know what she just said to me? And she's like, please keep my granddaughter out of this this satanic cult. That you're... So I grew up listening to this all the time. Meaning and people knew... were warning you, Marisa, that they were saying it's a satanic cult and stuff like that around you? Other people around you and your parents were, oh, were actually oh, my warning whole family. you? Like, both, really? Both of, well, they called that and... right, didn't they? Both my mother and father's side of the family, because they are all like devout Roman Catholics. Yeah, mm-hmm. they hated yeah. the fact that they, they, they thought my parents were weirdos. And I would see my uncles come over and make fun of my mom. And my uncle would be like, hey, you know, talking to my mom, He'd be like, hey, have you seen L. Ron Hubbard lately? You know, you've been floating in the clouds lately with LRH. And, you know, my I, I just knew that my parents were getting mocked. and even though it was in lighthearted fun, I always just felt awkward. I'm like, dude, I'm being raised in like something that society, like 99% of society does not agree with. And then my friends growing up in, in school, like my best friends that I had, I remember this, you know, my, my best friend that I had known since first grade, one time, I used to go to church with her. I was allowed to go with her to her little Sunday school Bible study thing. And the church of the Scientology Dianetics Center in Phoenix used to have a Tuesday kids night. And one time she was allowed to go with me. Um, and I was like, I was so happy. I'm like, wow, finally one of my friends, you know, is allowed to, to go with me. And, you know, I felt like a sense of normalcy, you know. And she went with me to this kid's night. Well, little did I know, I guess her mother was a, a receptionist for a psychiatrist. And when my friend went home, she, you know, her mom was like, where'd you go? And my and my little friend, you know, again, we're like eight years old. She's like, oh, I went to this place called Scientology. Oh, she, <laughs> and, and my friend from that point onward, she was never allowed to play with me again she was never allowed i know that sounds funny she's never allowed to play play with me but you know she was never allowed at my house ever again and it was so embarrassing and and it's like a child i i was just like wow like this yeah she couldn't come to my house anymore if i if i wanted to hang out with her i had to come to her house and my in my friend delaine is was her name unfortunately she you know, she passed away eight months ago. Oh, from, sorry, man. Like, yeah, you know, we're we'll getting into the whole fentanyl thing, but fentanyl is like wiping people out left and right. I know, especially but here in LA, too. She, um, you know, she just remembered like some of the last times I talked to her, she, she, she says, Yeah, I remember when we were little kids and 
I went with you to your Scientology kids night and, you know, we used to joke around about it, but yeah, I, I am just used to being ostracized because Arizona is not like California yeah. or Florida where they're like meccas of Scientology. Um, Arizona is, is a very desolate place, especially in the eighties and nineties for followers of Scientology. There were hardly any. And I, I how many exactly. were there, Marisa? How many were there at that? Was it an org or a mission that you were at um, in Arizona? Um, org, yeah. There's there is like the Phoenix org. Um, right, right. So, weren't you the only child in that whole or an org? And how many people were in the org? If you had to guess, you were the only child too. You didn't have anybody to play with, right? I I literally was the only person my age in the entire state of Arizona growing wow. up in San Diego. Talk I, about I'm not feeling I'm not like a fish out of water. And They're everybody's like, you can't, you can't say shit. that in like California and Florida, no. but it, it was it, even in acceptable, Arizona. Marisa. That's why it's so weird hearing you say that your Christian relatives and everybody around there was it was all evil. I never heard that. Well, maybe a couple times, but in California, it's acceptable, or people didn't know about it when I was growing up. I never got that kind of shit at all. It's yeah, just, I got like a lot of oh my god, my my family was constantly ripping into my parents. My wow, uncles man. on my mom's side, they, they oh. were making fun of my mom. Really? It was that but bad? It was like, like, they were like trolling her, basically, because hey, hey, that's, that's their sister. And they're like, hey, Sharon, you. you've been seeing L. Ron Hubbard in the clouds lately? And they, and then she, my mom would just laugh. And it, it, so I just kind of knew inherently at a young age that Scientology is not something that mainstream society likes. Like, I, I, I just knew it's something people don't fucking like you know and so when you're growing up in something where you understand that like 99 percent of the public atmosphere does not like what you're growing up in um and you know my best my little best friend was ordered to stop coming to my house that as soon sucks, as her mom man. found out it, it like and so i started feeling like a little freak i'm like and i i, I was so depressed i'm like and i used to beg my parents i'm like why can't you guys just be believe sane? In something normal? So you never you really know? took to it, Marisa. Were you? Did you ever like the auditing? Because you did tons of auditing. You did tons of stuff. Did you? Is there anything at all that you liked about it, or did you just? Did you just know popping out of the womb? My parents are into some evil shit, and I don't like it. What was it? hundred percent. Fuck this shit. I hated Scientology from wow. the time I yes, was a so child I. So because it was so. I and fucking invasive and intrusive and yep. my like you know they, they this is the thing like they say that they're there to help everyone and um you know the whole time i grew up in scientology i i don't think i've ever witnessed one time of scientology uh, the church of scientology helping any community or anything yeah. everything is photo ops yeah everything was like I remember when 9-11 happened, and this is what's yeah. like really funny. During 9-11, I actually, uh, I, was in, <laughs> I was engaged to a uh, Muslim guy from Afghanistan, and I didn't know what Muslims were back in 2000. Like, mm -hmm. It's so funny when I look back on it. I was 20 years old, and he was from Afghanistan, and, and really, he would like pray eight times a day, and it, me and my friends used to think he was like making it up. We're like, dude, you're just like making up this stuff. <laughs> and I look back, but if you look back in 2000, not a lot of America knew what Muslims were, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're young. And we were together for eight months. And I remember going to this like event that my parents drug me to. And it was David Miscavige, and it was the it was the very beginning of like the Iraq Afghanistan war starting, and David Miscavige was saying that Dianetics is the number one read book in Afghanistan. He, he, he wow. I mean, you're talking really? like Afghanistan, like hardcore, you know. And I, and then that was with this Muslim man from Afghanistan, and I remember asking him, I'm like, hey. Is this true that Dianetics is the most read book in Afghanistan? Because he spoke Farsi. That's mm -hmm. the language that they speak. Um, and he kind of knew what I was growing up in, but 
it's like I didn't understand him and he didn't understand me like cult cult or religious like it, it was very odd now that I look back on it but um, I'm like I just went to this event with the Scientology thing that I'm growing up in and this this David Miscavige guy said that in Afghanistan Dianetics is the number one top bookseller and he I remember my boyfriend at the time was like that what is he, like because they are strictly about the Quran in Afghanistan mm -hmm. and he was like uh no he's like I've I've never heard of this and he's like I I don't know what you're into or what your family is like reading about but it was just funny getting this like cultural like education from someone from directly from Af Afghanistan that's like a hardcore Muslim and then you I'm hearing David Miscavige on this big screen TV saying and I remember going to this event and it was this huge blockbuster he's like Dianetics has now been translated into 21 yeah. different languages and he's like you know all these different languages that he was breaking down he's like and it is currently the number one most um you know basically the number one bookseller in muslim nations and he yeah he said like iraq afghanistan and i'm like there's no way that i just don't think this is possible <laughs> but when you're so, in the truman show marisa and we went to all those events i didn't have any reason to disbelieve him i i thought it's so funny to find out how much he bullshits and also can't they get sued for some kind of liability for false stats because they would even use certain businesses and they had no qualms about using whatever they wanted to to bullshit people on the stats. But surely the Muslim people were like, if they ever heard an event like that, because you know they're kept internally, they'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because they bullshitted constantly in those four-hour hypnotic rah-rah events that Miss Cabbage would put on. Did you have to go to those as a kid and shit? Oh, the hip hip hurry. Yes, things? where you have to stand oh and, and clap and then sit down and clap like literally... I'm telling Don't you, I even I, remind me. I, I, I used to have to like fucking sweep L. Ron Hubbard's room. What? What do you mean? Because the, he's, you know, that's what they do. Yeah, well, I joined back. staff twice. I joined staff once when I was seven years old. Seven years old. Can I ask you about that real quick, Marisa? How did that go about? He's, isn't that even too young to join staff? Did your parents push it on you or what? Uh, yo, know, I, I was seven years old and it was my summer vacation. So I was about to go from first grade to second grade and my mother was on staff my mom was like heavily devoted into Scientology at the time and they wretched me they recruited me because even though they knew I had to start school in three months I was still like a staff for them for that week so if for they wretched me a seven-year-old to join staff that's a huge stat for the Phoenix org yeah and you know they told my mom they're like well you know marisa they, you know the whole thing she's an adult <laughs> even though i'm seven years old i'm an adult <laughs> trapped in a little body um and i was a very introverted child and i hated saying no to adults i just yeah. felt very uncomfortable so i was like okay yes i'll join staff and my whole and I, I had to sign a billion year contract. This is what I tell um, a lot of my Sea Org friends. Like, I don't know if they do this now, but back in the 80s and 90s, if you joined staff, you had to sign a billion year contract. And I remember like being a little kid and they were like, oh, the billion years just means that, you know, you have chosen to be born in the Scientology family and you're going to come back lifetime after lifetime after lifetime uh, in, into Scientology because I'm like so intelligent, you know? Yeah. I, I'm like intelligent and uh, doing this this thing. Oh, I got really quick because I think sure. I told... I don't know why the Sorry, chat's it's not... not. The, it's, it's not like the highest production uh, as you can see. It's okay, Marisa. We just want to hear you, man. I don't know so, why the chat's not... Going, guys, oh, but maybe I'll pop my, back in. Uh, rowing machine. Uh, my, my freaking rowing machine. And you know who saved me was this guy. Damn it. Gumby, how so? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't that know. That would have been a beautiful story. Make something up. 
Gumby, Gumby saved save me, you. man. Gumby told me. Gumby guided me through this whole principle of, you know, just <laughs> of just fucking. I know, <laughs> I know, but it's 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 your childhood dreams are taken away, so it's sweet. Um. So, yeah. Um. I don't know, man. It was just it, it was just like a clusterfuck of going through this whole like head fuck and insanity, and I just I. Like I said, I think my saving grace was going to public schools and and being able to grow up in a real world. Even though I was growing up in Scientology, I, I also grew up in normal society. You know, yeah. I got to experience a lot of just the normal culture. And it is true. You know, there are a lot of people in Scientology that have not experienced cultural events or situation it's so hard for them coming out of sea Oregon staff for that very reason because if you miss it marisa and you grow up in that you have no point of reference to even go back from at least if you're in you know in and around society you have something to go back to the curve is is lesser you know can you imagine surge you know we were talking about surge earlier can you imagine what his integration process must have been like I, mean, I can't even imagine. imagine like his story and that's why it makes me so mad when i see i'm not even gonna say but dude that guy is like the ultimate example of a childhood human traffic survivor yes. and and what he yes. has been put through from the time of like 10 years old and what he's had to endure I, I yeah. would have to say his story is is probably the worst story I've ever heard of. Of and he, I agree. Children but, growing up in Scientology. And not only that, Marisa, it says something about cults capturing intelligent people or something because he was a prodigy. And for him to come out on the other end, I'm sure you listen to him talk. He's unbelievably articulate and has his shit together and he's passionate about what he's doing. I swear they get the best people. They he's get, extremely they get, intelligent. He didn't do it. Like, the thing is, he's like, he didn't join this on his own. Like he, I know. But you, like his, his parents, parents fucking like, pushed him into it, man. Yeah, and he had he no choice. Got, that's the fucked got, up part about it. If you, if you, that is the part that really gets to me. And I know that's why you champion second generation, man, because we didn't have a fucking chance. It's okay. I forgive my parents. I've been through all the trauma or whatever. I, we never had a relationship. But Scientology destroyed everything. But if you're, you know, for the parents to join it and then push it onto the kid when they just popped out of the womb and not give them a choice. It's so evil and it makes it hard to forgive your parents because you know, your mom practices to this day, does she not? Right. So you have to listen sometimes to the uh, lectures and this and that. And there must be times when you want to strangle her, man. No, I'm oh, I trying to be gosh. mean, but you must, it must drive you nuts that she still hasn't taken responsibility. Do you feel like she needs to take responsibility, Marisa? Or how, are you, or did you deal with it? How the fuck do you look at that whole thing with your mom? If you don't well, mind me asking. She doesn't practice in like the common um, way of practicing, but I, I do know that she is a Sweetie, practice. sweetie, you, you, your sound sounds a little weird. Did you do something to it or are you super far away from the uh, oh, phone? What about now? Still, I don't know. Something happened to it. It sounds all um, echoey. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but um, did you change anything by any chance? No, I just plugged. Like, I did. Does it sound better now? No. It just got kind of echoey. I hate to be the sound guy, but um, you didn't. Yeah, I think it's like because uh, wait, like I'm using my phone and then it kind of went out and um, I plugged it in very briefly and that might be it. Do you want to try Does to plug it, it in? Still? Yeah, it sounds echoey. Is it because the battery's low? That might be it. You guys can hear that, right? Um, if you don't mind, could you guys let me know? I'm not just hearing it on my end, right? It sounds kind of echoey. Check, check, check. Did they say if it's echoey? I can't really see. So it, you look fine. It's just echoey all of a sudden. I have no idea what happened. You guys can hear that I echo, know, right? I'm like, I have to plug it in. Yeah, you can hear it, right? We hear the echo. Marie's like, God damn it, you're going to ethics if you don't figure out what you just did. You guys can hear her now, but it's super echoey, right? Is it going to drive you guys nuts or we should, should we, can is we continue? Still? Yeah, it is. That's weird. Echo in the bunny men. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I'm not a sound engineer. I have no idea what happened. Barely. It sounds, yeah, tinty. Is it going to drive you? Now? 
Mm, no. Do you want to try to move a little closer? I can put my mouth right up to the phone. No, just... What the hell um, just happened? Sounds like a PC mic. I have no idea. You sound fine to me, but you know what you're doing, and I don't, so that's probably why. Hmm. You don't have anything you can plug in or anything, some kind of a mic, some kind of... How about a headset? How about your headset and your earphones and shit? Do you have a headset where you can talk on the side? Yeah, I can do... You want me to Perfect. Do that? Yeah, that's great. Actually, Marisa, while you fix the sound, I'm going to play some Scientology songs and shit. So go do your thing, and we're going <laughs> to we're gonna rock it with Dougie Fresh right now. So oh take, take your time, man. But come in, come jump back in and, and, and test or whatever once you get your heads once hey, you get your heads Everything was fine though until I did that last until I plugged it in, right? No, it started right before that. Okay. I think the headset, if you have one, will will, will work. All it right, out. let me check it out and I'll be right sure. back. We'll take do your time. A intermission. No problem. And we all, we should hey. oh, we shit. practice our TRs while you're doing this. No, I refuse kidding. to do that, but if you want to do TRs <laughs> later, I'm you might be able to talk me into it. Don't worry. We got Dougie Fresh, man, uh, who's a Scientologist. Dougie, oh, you, Dougie, Marisa. I'll be right Wait, back. you got to get your sound back because I wanted to talk to you about Dougie Fresh, something you said oh. earlier. Okay. okay. I'll be okay. right back. All right. Somebody... Here we go, guys. This is Dougie Fresh, uh, Scientology song. Tell me where the party at. Uh. Put them up. Put them up. Put them up. Put your hands up. Put them up. I see a baseline. Uh. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Doug E. Fresh. Much love and much respect. And this is the joy creating. Come on. Now, let me tell you something. Watch this. You know what? Force yourself to smile, and you'll soon stop frowning. Force yourself to laugh, and you'll soon find something to laugh about. Ain't that right? Yes. You guys have any requests of what you want to hear from Scientology song? Because there's some that are actually halfway decent, but that's pretty bad, right? Um, I'll play it and see if, see if I can find something. Any requests, let me know. We'll throw it up. Wax enthusiastic, and you'll very soon feel so. A being causes his own feelings. Uh, it's the joy of creating, y'all. It's the joy of creating, y'all. Come on. Put them up. Yeah, the greatest joy there is in life. Okay, how about we watch We Stand Tall or something? Because I mean, it, this is just like typical church music, isn't it, guys? Like, all oh, it's so horrible that it's hard to find uh, anything that's good. Let's try this. We Stand Tall. What is this thing? Okay, here we go. Check this out. I don't think we can play the whole thing because I don't want to risk copyright. Okay, here we go. This is like the flagship song of Scientology. So tell me if you were strolling around in San Francisco in the late 60s, early 70s, and you heard this song, if it wouldn't kind of uplift you and draw you into the cult. Words from a book showed me the way To be free of the shadows of yesterday the price of that freedom we all must pay from now on. Ooh, joining together, we held our ground and we lifted our voices one mighty sound and struck down the walls of darkness. We stood tall. Yes, we did. We decided to take. Defend the rights of men Truth 
I'm just going to do a gratuitous pause just for copyright reasons. That's pretty catchy, right? I mean, is it not? That's, that's the best song. Do you guys have any uh, requests that you want to hear? Any, but any of you people know the Scientology album? Let's see what else we got here that I can find. They have like three albums of this shit um, of Hubbard and not Hubbard. The only one he sung on to my understanding was uh, Thank You for Listening, that which you listened to earlier. But I think he has, um, you know, Edgar Winter, uh, Frank Stallone, all these people that uh, John Travolta, you know, that, oh, here we go. I wonder if we can watch this a little bit. Every religion. Okay, check this out, guys. We'll just run a little bit of this. I don't want to get in trouble for copyright. Has its own music. <laughs> here we go. This guy talks about the very, how bad all church music is, basically. Every religion has its own music, chants or hymns or MXPX, but not every religion is Scientology and not every religious song is secretly about We're watching a little bit about the tunes, Marissa. Check this out. What do you, what do you sound like, hon? Do I sound normal now? Perfect. We got gotcha. you. Now, still enjoy your intermission because we got a little bit of Scientology listening to do. Ooh, it's perfect. We're right at the hour. Awesome. Here we go, man. Okay. The ancient souls of long dead aliens are attached to your soul because they lack their own free will because they were sent here by a galactic dictator named Xenu who put them inside. Do you really want me to finish it, uh, dude? If you want me to, I'll go back to it and do it. No problem. Just let me know again. Volcanoes and blew them up with hydrogen bombs. Time will be Thanks to Anonymous and South Park, most internet dwelling humans have a working knowledge of Scientology. Usually to hear the secret doctrine, you have to be in the church for several years, Stan. Are you ready to hear the truth? Created by science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbard in the 50s, Scientology is fascinating because it is the quintessential modern American religion. Its business practices are modeled after McDonald's and Coca-Cola. It uses very contemporary marketing techniques and it is on an endless quest for mountains of cash. It's as American as baseball or jazz. And it's a good thing that it has its own jazz. All right, this is kind of lame, right, guys? I mean, let's see if we can just finish off the We Stand Tall. I think we got enough requests. Denver Steve will take care of your request. Let's just finish off the second half now that we don't have to worry about copyright. And then Marisa will uh, go, I guess, into the second hour here. And whenever you need to end off, my friend, we're not going to keep you all night if you're if you're tired or you got to take care of the kid or whatever. Um, so let's see. We Stand Tall. You guys want to hear the rest of it? It is super catchy, right, Marisa? Shit, did she go? Okay, it's all right. It's all right. We got another song. Uh, make your dinner, and uh, we're going to run this hit. You got two and a half minutes. <laughs> okay, hang on. Let me pull this up here. Marisa's taking a break. If you guys have any questions or anything, too, I have some of them starred, which I'll ask her. Um, Marisa's YouTube channel. That's perfect. Let me show that. Are you back? I, like, I didn't know you were back. Oh, no. Take your, Marisa, take your time. We're just jamming some tunes. I'll show people your channel and stuff. Um, now, unfortunately, she has. We've managed to avoid this topic all night because I don't want to give the guy any uh, energy or attention. That's what he wants. But uh, Marisa has has uh, addressed zero dark Tony on the channel. But I don't want to speak for her. But my understanding is that she will have much more content coming on the second generation Scientology. Stuff I can't and, and see people. Are there people asking about that? Mm, they've been pretty calm, but I don't want them to feel like we're avoiding them. We just, you know, it's been a pleasure actually listening to your story. So. Yeah, no, I have a story. That guy, he's funny, man. I mean, we just, if we're on the topic, I'm not going to get into it too deep. All right, <laughs> go for it if you want. 
I am not going to get into it too deeply. You know, people in this community tend to think that things are a lot more um, sinister and deep than 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 what they are. But I, I mean, I guess basically what what it boils down to is the uh, ex Scientology community. They 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 got trolled hard by a very prolific um, cyber. I, I don't even know how to describe because I've tried describing them and, and nobody understands what I'm talking about. He's a very prolific uh, kind of cyber underworld type character. And the only reason I know about this shit is, you know, I, I was very good friends with uh, someone. Serge, what's yeah. up, dude? We have freaking Serge in here. It's so good to see you, man. We were just talking about you. Welcome, my friend. Sorry to interrupt oh, you. Well, to Serge. Say hi. Hey, man. We always say good Serge. You are the You are the man. Yes. And yeah, you are amazing. Keep doing and, what you're doing. Um, yeah. So yeah, Serge, like what's what made me mad is when I'm just like, Tony, like, what are you doing? Going after you say you're after like yeah. human trafficking survivors and doing this and that and, and it's like Serge is like one of the few people that's actually doing things to get the ball rolling about this and he, he gets ignored and I like I think people underestimate his um he's extremely intelligent and his story like I said is is one of the worst if not the worst I've, I've ever heard of my, in my entire life yeah um I mean, that's, he's and he, been, take that video down, by the way, it's never coming down. Um, we're talking about zero dark Tony, just so you guys know. And really just the solution is if you don't like it, just uh, ignore it. But he's great at pulling people's attention. And my opinion is the more energy that he gets, the more videos he has to feedback. Also, Tony's not blocked. So if you're in here, Tony, you're welcome to jump in as well. It's just we got that guy's. A, um, do you want to say more about that, Marisa? Because you're the one that kind of actually took the time to go down his YouTube channel and to do some research on Twitter to find out just how many hands and many pies that this, that this guy had and just was it threw everybody under the bus. I knew I was coming, Marisa. Anybody that talks to him or texts, that's why when I talk to him on the phone and I text him, I just assume it's all going on YouTube. There's no boundaries. There's no, um, he just, he'll, he'll go after anybody. Where are you, Tony? We know you're in here. Show yourself. <laughs> Mike. Oh, I, like I said, his initials are the same as mine, M.S. My name is Marisa Sigmund, and my, uh, Mer uh, Tony has the same initials as me, M.S. Um, so it, it was not very hard to do, and Tony, I know you're listening to this, and you're probably like, oh, my God, blah, blah, blah. So I, I know you understand, you think that there's like a sub-faction of like ex-Scientologists that are very uncultured, and they don't know like what's going on. And to a certain extent, man, he, he's right. Because I tried, I, I tried telling people like, hey, this guy is kind of going to do something bad. Um, and, and certain people would say, oh, whatever, I'm just ignoring him. I'm like, uh, you don't understand. Like, it, it's not going to be good. They're just like, yeah, whatever. And bam, like as Tony says, bam, boom, brr. It's Mersh, I've been watching your shit for a while, buddy. Do you want to um, explain the Mersh shit, Marisa? For people that are not in the know? Honestly, I'm at a point where I don't even know if it's worth explaining because sure. if I explain sure. it 50 fucking times, like people in, that are Scientology watchers are still not going to understand what I say. Why don't and we just direct them, guys, if you don't mind, can you please um, take a moment uh, either now or during, you know, afterwards to... Let me throw this up here, Marisa, real quick. To subscribe to your I mean, pretty much he's, you know, like, th there is a whole, I, I, I try telling someone, I'm like, hey, man, this guy, this guy's going to say some, some bad things about you, and it's not going to be nice. And they ignored it, and I was like, y you don't understand. And, and then when Sarah Dark Tony says things like, hey, I'm, I'm a computer guy, like, you're dealing with computer, like, he's not joking, people. Like, this guy is a he is um what do you think these guys go to school for you know like mark zuckerberg um what's that dude's name that used to run twitter the, um not elon musk you're not talking about elon musk uh, i forget his name the guy with the goatee and the 
you know, that's what these guys do. Like they go to college to make video games, make movies. They go on to work for Pixar. They, they make, you know, they, they, they make the grand theft auto video games that you play. Um, Tony, even though he comes across like a, um, you know, kind of just funny dude. He's not joking, man. He he could like rock the, and I even hate saying this because I feel like I'm complimenting him, but just from what I've like discovered about the guy, he he knows his shit, man. I and I only really know this because I think I told you like I I grew up with this guy out here named Paul Horner. Oh, and Tony Ortega hated Paul Horner, by the way, which is part of. You know, Tony Ortega is not someone I'm really fond of, but my yeah. friend Paul Horner uh, that I went to high school with was into the whole cyber underworld. He got a computer science degree, but his thing was not like the media end of things. He was making websites like that looked like CNN and stuff like that. And he would just do all these funny, goofy things and, and, and it would go viral and there would be like 20 million views. So very familiar with like the zero dark zero dark tony facade and at the beginning i was mad because uh and tony two toes that's my name for him tony two toes um you know he contacted me and you know we we, we had uh, some video chats and he uh, tony just so you know you you did the shots fired shit with like the kids thing dude like and then you know that that's like a not not a no no, it's like unacceptable territory, and you're dealing with me, someone that like I don't follow doxing rules. Like I, that's not my game, dude. That's your game. I'm not a fucking gamer. I'm not you didn't like dox him, by the way. I just want to clarify: she didn't dox him. All the information that she talked about, it's in Tony's own uh, channels and Twitter. Yeah, Tony, and stuff. He put you, it all you did out this there all himself. stuff like you, you lay your whole life out. And like he threatened, he biography. threatened me. He threatened Alan. He threatened anybody that gets close to him. He has. He's literally here to troll, and um, and I think he just wants your energy. So if you just ignore him, um, that pretty much handles that. I mean, what he can't it's make a, it really does. And honestly, I thought he was a cool guy, even though I knew he was full of shit yeah, like, within so the too. first couple of days I talked to him. But I was we started talking about like fentanyl because that is like a nationwide health emergency. And, and people in the UK and Britain, they don't understand. They're like, What do you need? It's a nationwide I wonder health if emergency. I wonder if corpse is um is uh Tony. Who? Corpse of Discovery. Yo, Marissa, you high kid, get a grip and shit. I say, what up? No, yeah. I can't read we got some. Shit. That's cool though. We got some Tony fans in here. That's cool. Oh hey, yeah. Hey, corpse, corpse. I. Tony knows what's up though. Like Tony knows what's up. Um, and then Tony, I know what's up about you too. And I, I never. Really Damn did. it, Marissa, your sound is fucking up again. What did you do, young lady? Is it doing it again? Yeah, it is. But we Tony. we fixed it once before, and I got plenty of Scientology tunes and questions. If um, if you want to fuck around with it in the meantime. If I, what did they say? Um, let's see. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm drinking an IPA. If any of you guys are into this um, voodoo IPA, it should be like a spokes model for that stuff. I honestly thought about buying a 40 ounce of King Cobra and just drink it. <laughs> uh, this is all going to be used against you, Marissa. I know. Um. Do you want it, to? It's to... funny because they're going to splice it. Like Maurice was talking about drinking a forty ounce of, of King Cobra. It's... Hey, Marisa, do you want to fix your sound while I hit him with some uh, Aaron Hubbard shit? Is it still doing it? It is. It's echoey. Okay, give me like two minutes. Sure. Because sure, it, no it fixed it last time, right? Yes. Okay. Is Serge still in her high Serge? I know. I wonder if he's still here. Yes. Serge, he is. Serge it's so cool to see you, man. Thank you for joining us. Serge, do you know what's going on with this zero dark dork? I mean, I, I don't even, it sucks that we're even kind of talking about him. I feel like I'm giving him energy or shit. I'm sure there'll be a video about this tomorrow. Um, but the thing is, like, can you hear me? Do I still sound bad? You still sound echoey. All Maybe, right, let me Marisa, like, do you want to try to jump out too or whatever you need to do that you feel will work? Yeah, I will. And I'm going to sure. come back in. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll keep them busy. I'm going to keep you guys busy with the neuroscience uh video neurotology i gotta get wait for this ad to run jesus christ man stand by
It's like a 15 second ad too. Jesus. I hate these ads on YouTube. It's so annoying. Okay. So check this out. We'll throw, Mar well, we'll keep Marisa in here. So let's share this. You guys seen the neurotology video? Oh no, they're going to fucking, um, I can't play this one, man. I played like 10 seconds of it before and they blocked the stream uh, immediately. So we can't play that one. If you haven't checked it out, we're, I wanted to play you Neurotology, which is um, We Stand Tall on Saturday Night Live. Let's see what else we can find here. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description box for that. Let's see. Scientology music. Let's see what pops up. Again, if you guys have any suggestions while we're taking another intermission, just uh, throw them in the chat and I'll, I'll find it on here. Scientology music. Hmm. Didn't find anything. What the hell? Nothing's coming up. Oh, check this out, guys. On this um, on this new app that I'm using, you can do music and shit. So let me know if you guys like this little jam, or and also if you can hear me and it doesn't interrupt the conversation. Can you guys hear that at all? Stand by if you take an intermission. I can't find any shit on here, man. Nothing's coming up under Scientology music. Yeah, that premium works, doesn't it? How much is the premium uh, dragon? Is it not like 30 bucks or something? So they kind of get conned either way, right? Because they make you pay to not have ads. You can't win either way. Um, all right. Laughing my ass off. Zero DT didn't have anything to say about Scientology. He just talked but said nothing. Hey, I tried to ask him philosophy, like what, you know, his Scientology story is. And I told him before he comes on to be himself. And if he wants to lie, that that video stays up. So it's on him. So I'm not telling you what to, I said, I'm not telling you what to do, Tony, but you know, that will, um, now's your chance and I'll guide you through it to tell your Scientology story. Um, I still don't know. What do you guys think? It's, uh, he might've um, actually had that Scientology story and embellished it a little bit. It might totally be true or it could be made up. What do you guys think? those that watch that video of uh that interview with them i can't sing man I, I i can't stop putting me on the spot philosophy that's embarrassing youtube premium 13.99 not bad not bad and i assume that skips all the ads and you don't have to listen to it anymore that would that's a good 13 bucks that's spent doug how far did you get into scientology ot3 kate and i lost my fucking mind and also they tell you let me put this over here for the meantime. They tell you on OT3, well, at OT3, Kate, they tell you that there's no more body thetans. And if you don't know what that is, um, to make a long story short, that's the big secret. So all the levels are leading up to that. And the confidential levels begin at OT1, and then you go to OT2, and then finally you're hit with this galactic story where there's all these alien beings that you have to get rid of on your body. So after you go through a long process of getting checked out in your apartment, you have to have a locked room like I did in my apartment. And I was sharing it with a roommate and I would creep in with my little CIA briefcase because you have to get the materials and then carry the briefcase around everywhere you go until you get into the room. Then I would unlock the materials, open up the list of volcanoes, which are going to be used to run the auditing. And then I would telepathically, um, well, first of all, I'd find a pressure point on, uh, on an area of my body using telepathy. And I would um, run them through incident one and incident two. I can't even talk about this shit because it sounds too confusing, but there's an, there's an OT3 lecture that I have up on the channel, which is about 15 minutes where you can listen to Harvard ramble about all this shit. But long story short, I run them through some incidents and they go away. And I got to tell you, I fucking felt amazing. I believed in it. And therefore I felt like I was really helping mankind by doing this incredible spiritual shit in my bedroom that none of my friends could possibly understand around me. And thank God I didn't get to um, OT4 because they promise you on OT3, no more body thetans. 
an OT4, OT5, OT6 is a training course, an OT7, which can often take many years, up to 10 or 15 years to finish. It's all body phases from there on out. And then OT8, if you guys don't know, is where you, um, just like the state of clear where you're, where he's, L. Ron Hubbard's doing the ultimate troll. You go through all the identities that you thought you were in your, in other words, in your previous auditing, you have past lives. I had hundreds of them that I made up on OT8. You go through all those identities, realize that they were all your body thetans, ideas in past lives. So therefore you now know who you're not and you're willing to find out who you are. In other words, you're right back to where you started before you even stepped into Scientology and the clear cognition. That's the first main goal that you're going for is you realize that you are mocking up. That means creating or imagining your own reactive mind. That's the subconscious mind filled with trauma that you're trying to get rid of. And then you realize on clear that you were making it up all along and therefore you don't need to keep creating it. Again, you're right back to square one. I think that, I mean, if you think Zero Dark Tony was trolling us, I think Hubbard was the ultimate troll. Anyway, sorry for the ramble. What, what questions do we have here? And let me know if, if that music's too annoying. I'm just trying it out. If it's too loud and you can't hear me or you don't like it, please let me know because I'd like to not use it in the future. Yeah, in regards to Karen and stuff, it's no, it's more than just being like weird and stuff. I, like I said, I consider Karen to be a, a malignant narcissist, and you guys have no idea if you're new to this. It's not rumor mongering. It's not trying to stir up drama. She controls the fucking shit out of the of stuff behind the scenes, man. Did you see her go bonkers when I just put out that over the rainbow movie and the controlled opposition shit, and she got into everybody's ear and went on everybody's show and created a whole hoopla? That's nothing, man. She is. She's very much behind the scenes uh and hopefully we can go more into that without sowing discord because i i get the i get what, what some of you guys are saying like let's just keep the community well and let's just keep fighting scientology yeah but you can't do that if the narrative is being so fucking controlled behind the scenes not least by karen and jeffrey <clears throat> amen corpse where'd you go All right, let me try to find a Scientology video to keep us busy. Is Marisa back? Would she even be able to hear us? Marisa, if you can hear me or whenever you're ready to roll in, let me know. What up again, Serge? Serge, do you have any um, particular music that you listened to in the cult that ca captured your attention? Any songs at all that you liked? All right, let me pull something up here. It's just hard to find Scientology stuff. Scientology music video. Hmm. Okay, we'll just listen to... Shit, did we... We already finished We Stand Tall, right? It's literally the only one that's coming up here. Um, let's see. Hmm. God, I wish I could show the Neurotology video. Hopefully Marissa will be coming back at some point. Didn't, we just need to, her to fix her mic. Let's see. Who's worshiping death in the chat? Goldie, get on them if you're still here. We did not finish We Stand Tall. One in the chat if you want us to finish it. Two if you know. We'll play it right now then. Ciao. Thanks. Stand by. All right. Here we go. By popular request from Chow and Denver Stevo. Let's bust this out. So I need to turn off the music here. Okay, one and two. I guess we're playing it, guys. Halfway through.
All right, I just got to take a gratuitous break. I don't want to give any reason for Scientology to copy claim this. I think Marty Rathbun is in this. Are you back, uh, my friend? Hey, yeah. Perfect. I you heard sound that. great. That's awesome. Do I, does it's it fucking, sound better? It's killer, right? You sound perfect. And Marisa, we got to find out if this is Marty Rathbun in here. Um, I believe he is, right? But I guess we'll finish this off, Marisa. You That's sound perfect. what brought me back here because I heard the hey, let it It always brings people back. That's hey, what got people into the cult. <laughs> you were pulled That's back. That's probably the best. It's a Gosh song, darn Scientology jam Fuck ever. A, fucking A. Remember what Laura was talking about? And uh, Laura, sorry. And Over the Rainbow, she was talking about the music and how it kind of pulled her in. Sorry, Laura, if, I, I'm, if I'm getting this wrong, but I think in Over the Rainbow, you were talking about how there was this music and she started singing it and shit in the movie where it just like these epic fucking words and lyrics that made you feel like you were joining something like cosmic with Scientology. I wonder what song she would have been referring to. She kind of it had to have bit. been that one because that's the only one that was halfway decent. <laughs> it sure in the hell is not Key to Life. They're the Key to Life song. <laughs> I wish I could find that fucking thing. I've never seen it. Tell you what, Marisa, let's finish this one off and I'm going to look for it. I'm going to look for other songs. While, I don't know um, if you can find it because I've tried really? finding it before. And mm. it, like, I know other people have heard of it, but it's like just so dumb. And mm -hmm. I, I don't even know why L. Ron Hubbard got into music production to tell you. Like, because he was a genius at everything. Didn't you know he could do everything by the power of hypnotizing himself? You know, what's funny, though? Is like that song. Uh, what's the song that he sings? Um, thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. I know thank my family members, and this, is, this is how like stupid you know, when you when you know you're growing up in this like shitty brain dead cult. I, I have family members that would listen to that song and they would sit there and be like. Oh my God! This is man. L. Ron Hubbard's really like getting back at people, and and I'm just listening to this song. Like, are you joking? Like, this is really getting. This is L. Ron Hubbard taking a stab at people. You know. And what do you there, mean? What, like, what music were they referring to? What do you mean taking a stab at people? His song. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. Like hardcore believers, like my sister, you know how I told you she would drive me to the org every day and listen to nothing but L. Ron Hubbard and thank you for that listening. Would drive and me fucking crazy. A lot of like hardcore Scientologists, they really believed that, that song. It was like L. Ron Hubbard, like putting squash in everybody. They're like, oh man, L. Ron Hubbard, like this, this song is like bad as like L. Ron Hubbard is, uh, Listen to how intelligent he is, and he's really putting his critics to. I know. The, that's and, what I I thought, and I would just sit there and I'm like, oh my God. Like, and as a child, I'm just it's so to funny you knew that, Marisa, because man, understand I thought, this. Like, what, what did you, you think? You think your parents, I thought my, I didn't like Scientology, but I thought my dad was God, basically, because, you know, you trust him. It must be me that's wrong. There's not one moment when you kind of fell under the spell or. You, just you know, there, there honestly the was, and, and, I, and I'm always very open about this, but for the most part, I, I, I did know L. Ron Hubbard and Scientology was weird, like I said, because everyone I grew up with and all of my relatives were non-Scientologists, but there was a brief stage where I started kind of feeling the little brainwash effect taking control and and mainly it was because i had a crush on this staff member dude and it's amazing what <laughs> the power of liking someone the opposite sex will indeed. be <laughs> in fucking deed so many great it's like staff member guy <laughs> we we sort of dated each other for 
six months and his whole thing was he used to be like an ex pothead but his brother was a huge stoner that wanted nothing to do with scientology and so i was dating this guy and he wrote a fucking kr up on me one day and i'm like why did you write a kr up on me i thought you were my boyfriend and he's like marisa my staff career is more important than anything and by you smoking pot when you know when you're not supposed to that's out ethics and um he's like yeah you can put my pot or uh basically i, I was gonna put his staff life in jeopardy and i'm like okay by having a 2d or um for human terms by having a crush on him or have one having a possible relationship with him he had to turn you away or something what do you mean why didn't that i that's how i got sucked onto staff by a a cute gal that they purposely tried to lure me in with they didn't try to use him to lure you into uh more further scientology Shit, no man. Oh, okay i thought i lost you i got that continue <laughs> oh okay yeah pause for a second so, yeah, no, it's, it, I don't know, didn't do that, and joining staff was just like a weird uh, scenario, because, like I said, I, you know, I, 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 I joined staff once at seven, and then I joined again at 19, you know, this, this last time I'm talking about. And I remember when I joined the last time, um, there was just like no other staff members really at the Phoenix org. There were like maybe two or three. And um, then they would always have Sea Org members come in from other orgs to come to the Phoenix org to like motivate us. And there was always, always this like, one particular Sea Org guy, God, I forget his name, but he's like, what are you guys doing? I, and I remember he's like, what What are you guys doing? We need to save the planet. Everyone, get up. Get get, get off your, your asses. We have work to do. We have to save the planet. And I'm sitting there like watching this guy like, dude, what are you fucking talking about? Like... I, I don't know. Like I said, I think it's because I did grow up in like a normal world, but slash Scientology world. And, um, you know, he was just this dorky guy walking around like, we have to clear the planet. We have to sit. And he would just walk around the org constantly, like ordering us like drill sergeants. Like we have to clear the planet. We have to save the planet. And I'm like, what do you want me to do, Bob? Like, like there's nothing going on what like, did this, you have to do is... on staff marisa at six uh six or seven what did they have you doing uh when i joined staff at seven years old it was primarily stamping letters right and putting them in envelopes and you know it is of it from the mind of a seven-year-old i was really kind of happy i'm like wow this is awesome because you know when you're a kid you you know you always kind of want to use your imagination and act like an adult yeah. so i'm just like psh, 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 stamping things away and i'm like wow this is cool i'm an You're adult being productive yeah i am doing adult things and and which is messed up because i i think that that might be what they do to like every kid that joins staff i don't know but i remember getting a paycheck and, you know, someone brought this up to me about my paycheck because I technically was only seven years old. Um, they they probably should have been taxed for that back then or something. I don't know, because this is for Scientology even lost its religious exemption status. Or, I mean, gained its, its you know, as far as like being a religion. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah, I remember that day so, my, when that happened. It's just been like a wild uh, engagement. And <sighs> growing up in Scientology, it, it, it hasn't exactly been fun. And 
you know, I described in my um, YouTube interview, you know, it, it flagged down in 2014. Oh like, yeah. I'm actually going to show people some of that if you don't mind. Do, oh, you, no, do, you, yeah. do you, do you, do you mind Marisa or so we can. No, so go ahead. You could like say, you know, you could show whatever you want. And like, that's okay. why I, I'm just like, I've been doing this for like, you know, sharing my story for so long. That, no, I know that, that, you have. That, that, huh? There's like nothing that anyone could say. I know I haven't made, you know, I'm one of those people that is just like, I'm not like a, a fabuloso, I don't know, character. I, I, I just started doing this like early enough where I'm like, hey, man, at the time I was like one of the only second chance to share my story. And it was passionate. It, it felt important to me at the time. And I'm glad that there have been others after me that have laid the groundwork that are much more influential than me with much larger audiences that can get the word out. But in the in the grand scheme of things, I, I just feel like I'm glad that I at least I put my story out there and, and to, to kind of put a community effort about this. One second, Marisa. Hey, Corpse, you know, it's cool if you're here and you can disagree, but don't insult people, man. Seriously, that. I'll, I'll oh, no, what's he saying? Out. Who's Corpse? Is it Zero Dark Tony? No, I don't think it is. Um, like I said, Corpse, literally anything goes, but don't insult people, man. That's like not cool, man. Oh, I wish I could see who it is. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll pull it up. I'd be um, like, oh, man, Corpse, you want to get in an insult battle? And that's another funny thing about me is like. You know what people don't understand is like when when you're trained as like a, a Scientologist yep. from a little tiny age to like bull bait people and insult people. Well, here's a bull bait. There's a comment. You have 150 folks. I assume that um, corpse you're referring to the 150 subscribers eating her diarrhea of the mouth up. What's diarrhea? Like what? What are you talking about? <laughs> corpse, did you grow up in Scientology, man? Just out of curiosity. Hey, Corpse, it, you're talking to like a chick that's seen Guar five times in concert. That is a live. bad ass band. So, like, diarrhea. Um, yeah, we could talk about Also, that. Corpse, no, I mean, do you have a YouTube channel or something we could check out so we could judge you? It's really easy to sit behind a computer, but it's something different when you actually put yourself out here and try it. So, if you have a YouTube channel, let me know. And I'm sure Goldie would drop a link. I'd like to. Um, to just see what you have to offer. <laughs> I'll have to like see what I I don't know what it is, but it sounds like very elementary grade. Like there's a lot of people that what? that you have diarrhea uh, in your mouth. That that's a logical retort. Oh, is that what he's saying? Man, I wish I could see what you're doing. See, I just the, showed it to you, man. But we're already given the we're already like um. That's why I said if he wants wants to insult people and uh, divert the conversation. Like Oh man, if I if I had like a insult match with whoever this person is, and I don't even want to go there, but this is what people need to realize about mm -hmm. ex Scientologists that grew up in Scientology. We are masters of um, insults, and I don't That's like true. do. I really don't like doing that. But yeah, I hear you. Um, you know, we're very nice, you know, you could tell Serge, Serge is a very nice person and I'm a very nice person, but you know, you're, you're like, you're trained from a very young age to literally like your order to be like, Hey, three, two, one, do like TR, yeah. like the whole bull bait session. And then you have to like, I remember the first time I was ordered to bull bait someone and I didn't want to, I was like eight years old. I'm like, I don't want to insult this, like. 40 year old lady that I didn't even know. I know. I think that's such too. a, it's like, um, Corpse, we grew up insulting people, man. Now, I was a professional. You know, me and my friend Marcus Sawyer had an argument, and I know exactly how to push my friend's buttons. I know how to lay into them, like where it could be disturbing. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't never say the kind of shit um, that you say, especially to people that have survived a cult. So, I don't, I don't get where that comes from. I mean, disagreement's one thing, but we became professional manipulators and professional at <laughs> insulting people and getting under their skin. So that's the last thing that I kind of want to engage with. It's just, you know, you grow up from that, or at least 
I don't know. At least I worked on that big time because I, I, um, like Marisa was saying, like I would lay into old ladies in the TRs. You know, they have this thing called bull baiting where you learn to become a professional at finding people's buttons and then hurting them or whatever. And that was so bad that when I got out, I'm sure, you know, Marisa probably went through this too, like other Scientologists. It takes a long time to get rid of that way of acting, you know? So I find that shit disgusting today, just to be honest. I but think again, it's disgusting too. I, like, and honestly, I'm not shit, like, man, we lost your voice again. Are we going to have to go to another L. Ron Hubbard song? Oh, no. no. Hey, Marisa, perfect. Jump out. I'm going to play the flag um, video for people so they can know your story a little bit more and I'll give some context to it. And then just just jump in when you, when you get you the audio. Me? I can hear you, but it's echoing again. So whatever you did last time, if you don't mind and I'm fixing it. Yeah, do that, and I'm gonna see whatever this like. What's this guy's name again? Oh, my oh God. don't worry about it. And corpse, we're not even. I mean, it's it's all good, man. All I was just saying is just I don't I see why you have to say. I, I don't see why you have to bull bait uh, ex cult members, huh? I, I, I would say like Z, I, I am pretty sure it's like ZDTA, and he's really kind of weak when it comes to insults, like. No, I don't. But we have talked. That realize, like, they're dealing with like masters of. Marissa, we cannot hear you, my friend. You got to get better audio. Then you can come back in here firing. I got your back on the uh, on this video that I'll okay, show do to it people. And I'll be... Sure. Okay. 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 She'll be back, friends. So this is her at Flag Down in 2014. This is when a lot of exes got together. Um, this is Pete Griffiths here, who was the host. And many people have gone their own separate ways because, yeah, it's a it's a torn community, man. There's a lot of trauma people, survivors and stuff. And uh, often we have it out uh, behind the scenes as well. And Pete Griffiths, I haven't seen him in a while. Um, I'm not even going to talk about it. It's just like when this happened in 2014, everybody got together to kind of share their stories. And um, it's been interesting, the development that's happened to many and various people since then. So let's listen to some of Marissa's story while she comes back. Away from my zone, Poor Marisha, she's already nervous and they're having like mic problems and shit to get this started, so here we go. And I know for myself specifically, uh, I've joined staff twice before as a young child and once in my 20s. And when they were trying to get me to join staff, what they do is they find your ruin and, you know, try to tear you down and break you down and make you feel like a piece of crap about yourself. And I didn't want to join staff, and they would ask me why. And I would say, well, I'm planning on going to college. And they would say, why would you want to do that? That's something for yourself. You know, what about the planet? What about... Can you guys hear that okay? I get I can't get it any louder or clearer, but if you can't hear it, I don't wanna have everybody listen to nothing. So if you can't, please let me know. The universe, saving the planet. I would say I understand that, but I, I need a career. I want to go to college. And they would say, Well, that's again, that's for you. You're being selfish, you're thinking of yourself. So they definitely have a weird Sorry to interrupt here. That's a great question. I'm glad you brought it up. Let me pull it up. Um, definitely not Osa. Can you ask her what she thinks really happened with Arnie and with his website after his death? Yeah, she was close to Arnie, so I will definitely ask her about that. We've talked about that. For people that don't know, Arnie Lerma was kind of the um, conspiracy guy and would go very deep down the rabbit hole and has a ton of information on Lermanet.com to take apart this mind control prison. I learned so much from that guy. I even dedicated one of the videos on the series to him called The Bridge to Total Amnesia. And he, um, I'm gonna let Marissa answer this question because I have my own speculation. I don't think it was a conspiracy. I think he was driven to that point by Ginger, his wife. If you guys don't know, he shot Ginger, I believe twice. This was his wife that he was living with at the time. 
and which is a little sketchy. Um, like I said, I'll have Marissa go into detail, but if you want me to speculate, no, I think the it went down the way that it did, that there's no conspiracy. And um, he just was driven to a point of no way out. And so he shot Ginger. She had a huge scar in her uh, mouth, um, was probably terrorized. And Arnie went into the bathroom and shot himself, which is really weird and it sucks. And if that is what in fact happened, which I believe it is, it's really sad, man, because he did a lot of work to help people. And from the people that I've talked to that knew him, including Marissa, he gave people a lot of help behind the scenes and he was a solid guy. So that fucking sucks. Back to Marisa. When it comes to anything that most of us would like to do, any aspirations and goals. Um, and you know, my mother was declared a suppressive person for simply expressing her opinions on an open internet forum and also for communicating with somebody that Scientology deems an SP. So OSA had one of their private investigators research who my mother is to find out why she is talking to this other suppressive person. And in the process of doing so, they found out that she's the mother of the ED, or executive director of the Phoenix Org, who happens to be my sister. So they declared my mother for talking to this SP and making public negative statements about Scientology. Uh, my mother refused to make amends by the church. She refused to go through this whole process of retracting her statements and promising that she'll never do this again. Uh, and so she was declared and kicked out like a piece of garbage by Scientology. And they were even nice enough to send her her declare notice two days before Christmas Eve. And she spent 30 years within the Church of Scientology just to be kicked out for who she associates with and for, for freedom of speech. It's okay, yeah. Okay. And uh, the whole disconnection policy, Scientology lies about that constantly. So as soon as Marissa, Marissa comes back in, she's out of the chat right now. As soon as she comes back in, we'll jump her in. But for now, uh, we'll just play this until she comes back. My mother was declared a suppressive person. Uh, my sister was ordered to disconnect from all of us, and she did so for about three years. She didn't have anything to do with us at all. So if disconnection is real. It does happen. I don't care how much Scientology lies about this. I'm here as a witness to it. Uh, my father is a clear, which means he has obtained the middle of the bridge. And he's actually a past life clear, which means he's done this before. So I always joke about past life clears and ask, if you've done this before, do you get a refund? You know, do, you, do you get your money back? And of course the answer is no, you don't get your money back. Uh, when you're a clear, they tell you that you're invincible, your body is irrelevant, you do not have to worry about psychosomatic illnesses such as diabetes, cancer, heart disease. You're, you're never going to get that because you're so spiritually above everybody else that your body doesn't matter. It's just a piece of meat. It's a piece of crap. So my father went through life believing this, that he's invincible. And now that he's 60, uh, you know, he's realizing it's not true. He uh, has some health issues going on. And he's having a hard time. He doesn't know how to take care of himself. And I know that that sounds strange. It sounds weird. But I think it's something that not too many people understand, I guess, unless if you've experienced it. Uh, so that always gets me a little bit emotional. It's very depressing having to watch my parents figure out their lives again in their 60s after spending 30 years being brainwashed and duped by a cult very hard. A uh, big story of mine that many people may know about is the death of my nephew. Uh, his name was Tyler Reeves. He died at nine years old and I ultimately hold the Church of Scientology's rules and policies liable for his death. 
uh, since my sister was the executive director of the Phoenix Org, she was ordered to stay on post 15 to 16 hours a day, six to seven. I just texted her guys to see if she's coming back because normally she pops back in, but we've been having trouble all night just to get this stream running. So we'll play this. We'll just play it out, and if she comes back, then we'll talk to her, and if not, we'll probably give it a wrap, because how long we've we been going for? Somebody said earlier, yeah, it's cool hanging out at night. I don't know, what time is it where you guys are at? It's um, 11 o'clock here in Los Angeles, but I imagine our overseas folks, it's probably like the morning time, right? Or, or if you're in New York, it would be 11, 12, 1, 2, about 2 o'clock a.m., but it's cool hanging out with you guys, man, and just chilling in the night. Maybe we'll do this more often. I just texted Marisa to see if she's coming back. And uh, like I said, we'll finish this out. And if not, and you have any questions to ask before we roll out, please throw them out now. 1 a.m. Chow is 1 a.m. So where does that make you? You don't have to say your identity, Chow. Heaven forbid we should dox people, right? Jesus Christ. 1 a.m. Lady, thanks for hanging out with us this late. And another 1 a.m. Is there anybody out here in my time? 7 10 a.m so what are you in uh england probably mina or something all right doug after dark that has a catchy ring to it chow i think i'm going to use that all right guys let me try to play some other background music is this going to be a no-go like on everything so i played ambient music before how about let's try chill hop these might all be lame but i thought it might be cool to have some background music run let's see you guys want to hear hip hop? Let's try that one. I'll turn it up a little bit so you guys can hear it. That's kind of lame too, right? Hmm. So we got chill. These are what we can choose from for the music. Chill, down tempo, lounge, hip hop, lofi, chill hop, ambient, and future. Pop. Somebody said they sound like elevator music. Yeah, they all kind of do. We'll just try this one. And if not, there goes the music. I guess if the other music didn't put you to sleep, this probably would too, right? Nice, JP. Okay, enough on the music, I guess. I want to finish Marissa's story here. She actually goes into this and it gets uh, really bad. Perhaps you can understand where she's coming from. Uh, we'll listen to this. One days a week, and she has three young children. And when you run into problems, like not being able to find a babysitter or your car, you're having car problems, you're insulted for having problems like that. Those are wild issues. So, she was trying to save the planet and giving her life up for this. And her children were left home alone one night and the house burnt down and caught on fire. Oh, oh, oh no. So my oldest nephew and niece managed to make it out and my nephew Tyler uh, passed away in the house fire. And the local news media was trying to make a story about it. They wanted to know why were no parents home who the parents were, you know, it's usually a big story. Drownings and burnings are big stories in Phoenix. And I remember coming home to a news van uh, wanting to speak to me. They wanted to know who my sister was and I told the reporter that, I told the reporter that uh, I just found out my nephew died. I don't want to speak to them at this time. I'd like a chance to mourn in privacy. Uh, somebody contacted OSA and told them that the news media is trying to make a big story out of this since my sister is the, the ED of the org, Scientology did not want this getting out publicly. And OSA flew out quicker than shit, excuse my language, but they flew out like that. I mean, they were on the next... Just real quickly, so did uh, Marilyn Honeg, who he laid into uh, on one of the very first videos. Uh, Marilyn's story is, um, horrible by the way, and she's a hell of a survivor. <sighs> so I think Marisa's, um, I think she's probably trying to get back, but we just had problems with her phone, uh, all night and she couldn't even get into the thing earlier. It was, she showed me the screenshots and it was blocking her. So it's probably just some technical issue on her end.
But like I said, we'll finish this off and then we'll take some questions and call in tonight. But here's the rest of her story. Sorry for interrupting. Plain and the OSA agents, I don't know any names. They, they don't usually give out names. But they contacted me and said, we understand that you have spoken to the news media. What did you tell them? And I said, I, I didn't really talk to them. I told them I wanted to be left alone. So this OSA agent told me that I cannot speak to the news media. I cannot mention that my sister is a Scientologist and that she's running the Phoenix Org. If I do so, I could put the whole Church of Scientology in jeopardy and also the whole future of mankind. <laughs> if they, I mean, if they found out about this. Uh, I was in my early 20s back then, so having the idea that I could be responsible for Earth's demise, was, <laughs> I didn't want to be a part of that, so I said, <laughs> I'm not going to talk to the news media, don't worry. Um, but at the, the funeral service for my nephew, which from what I'm gathering from other people who had deaths, Scientology funerals, it's probably one of the strangest, creepiest, experiences that you will ever have. I wrote a poem to say publicly at my nephew's funeral, just in honor of him, how much I love him, just, you know, final goodbye. And an OSA person came up to me and said, hey, we hear that you have a poem that you would like to read out loud. We need to read this first before you can say this. And I asked why, and they said, well, we just want to make sure that you're not saying anything bad about L. Ron Hubbard, David Miscavige, or the Church of Scientology. And I said, well, that, that's the last thing I want to talk about. It's my nephew's funeral. I, I'm not going to talk about David Miscavige here. So they read it, and they gave me the thumbs up that I could read it publicly. And during the whole service, uh, there were about three OSA agents. They were just walking back and forth. I mean, it's literally like the CIA, how you see them walking, you know, on top of the White House and, uh, you know, wearing their men in black uniforms. Really, really weird. And my nephew was cremated, but my side of the family, since the, we were considered downstat Scientologists, since my parents were not going up the bridge and spending money, we were not allowed to know where my nephew's ashes were spread, and we were completely left out of the whole process. Like, it, it was a huge secret. And I've heard that from other people, that it's the same thing where they just cover it up. They don't want you to know what they're doing with the body, what's happening. And uh, so, yeah, that is, that is what happened to my nephew. And it's, it's very disturbing. And that's around the time when it fully dawned on me, just how evil and corrupt the Church of Scientology is. George? Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, as for me, I spent the majority of my Scientology experiences as a child and a teen since I grew up in it. Uh, I had a full-fledged Scientology upbringing. I don't have the experience of OT levels or even queer, but I've taken many courses, I've read many Scientology books, I've had tons of auditing performed on me, I've done the purification rundown twice, joined staff. Um, you know, I was basically a dollar symbol within the Church of Scientology. If the Phoenix Org needed more, more money, my parents were called to get me on course. Uh, it wasn't that anyone on staff at the org wanted to help me. I don't think they really cared if I gained anything from these courses. They just needed to get their stats up and their money level for the week. Yeah. And what better way to do it than by a younger kid whose parents make decent money. Um, but the thing is, Scientology makes it blatantly obvious that they don't care about other people's well-being. The whole time I grew up in Scientology, there's such an emphasis on helping others and saving the planet. You know, this whole global thinking, and honestly, I can't think of one time where I was ever told to help someone. I've never seen anybody else help each other. It's, it's very weird. You go to these events, you know, I would watch them via satellite where David Miscavige is talking how 
the whole Near East, Af Af Afghanistan, and Uganda is reading Dianetics, and <laughs> I'm just sitting there even as a younger person thinking, I, I don't think this is really happening. <laughs> um, it's, it's odd how they try to trick you and make you believe that they're doing this, uh, saving the earth, saving the planet. It, it's not reality, it's not what is actually going on. Um, you know, whenever I would yawn, sneeze, be angry, or upset over something, I was constantly asked, what have I done lately that I do not want anyone to know about? Because they believe if you're angry or getting sick, you must have done something to create this. You're guilty of something. As a lot of you may know, it's called Overts and Withholds. So I had to write up my Overts and Withholds many times, probably from the time I was about seven years old. And, uh, they have your life sec sectioned off into eight dynamics. So I remember one time having to write up every overt and withhold I've done in my whole entire life. It took me about three days to write everything up. And uh, I'm sure you've all heard about the masturbation thing in Scientology. That's considered a first dynamic withhold because it's something you're doing to yourself that you do not want anybody to know about. And uh, I remember writing all of this up, and then my auditor was told that, or told me, that she's going to show this to my parents now. And I remember begging and pleading with her that I don't care what she shows my parents, she can show them all of my other dynamics. I don't want my parents reading my first dynamic over and with holes, because it's pretty freaking embarrassing, for one. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, it's just something I want to keep to myself. It's, it's personal. So my parents had to read everything wrong I've done in my whole life. And then I was told afterwards that the auditor did this incorrectly, and this shouldn't have happened, uh, period. And I was told this constantly throughout my life, that I had the wrong tech applied. My auditor didn't know what he or she was doing. I had the wrong drills performed on me. Glenda, if you're just joining us, she is speaking to people at a place called Flagdown, where all the ex-Scientologists got together to kind of put on an, an event and speak out as one unit. And this was um, near Flag. And they got followed by Scientologists, and you know they kind of got harassed. Uh, there's a whole story behind Flagdown, actually, about the harassment in Scientology. But Marissa's, uh, Marissa's speaking to the audience there. So right now, yeah, I just... You know, it, it's nice to know that I was basically used as a big mental experiment on a bunch of people who have no clue what they're doing. But that's, that's Scientology. It's a world where everybody wants to act like they are superior and have immense mental powers. But it's really a world full of lost and Just so you guys know, it's uh, we're at 1647 and there's 2645 to go. So 10 more minutes and then I'm going to start. I'm starring questions and then we're rolling out of here. It looks like Marissa is not able to come back, but this is the perfect way to end. And I'm sure we'll have her back on in the future, guys. We're <laughs> we talk a lot, man, and we're, we go way back. So I'm sure this is just interview number one. She she's a little nervous, my friend. She has a, you know, a lot of heart and a lot of balls. And she has a lot to share that she didn't share tonight, which um we barely got into it, but I'm just happy she came on and she's sharing her story here. Souls who are brainwashed. Yeah, I could go on and on with stories of what it's like to grow up in this cult. It's been several hours, but I know we're on the time limit, so uh, it's just you know, it's me bringing any ounce of awareness to this can shed some insight for any of you, or if anybody is watching this that can gain something from this. Uh, I, I know I've done my job at least. It's getting a lot more public awareness thanks to people like Pete and this, this event. Uh, it needs to be stopped. I, I don't understand how it is allowed to continue by our government. It's a very destructive cult. And I hope that we're all here to see its demise. Oh. Good for you, Marissa. Good for you. Does anybody have any questions? Questions? Comments? I was curious, uh, what actually happens at a Scientology funeral? Do they have a specific 
right. get a load of this. He's asking her what happens at a Scientology funeral. And and I she gets a little caught up on how to explain it. But those of you that have been in Scientology, you know what, what it's like and what she's about to say. And also, because her nephew died in a fire, and somebody asked earlier if that was the fire that Chris Shelton was negligent on, I believe so, but don't hold me to that. Um, we'll ask Marisa when she gets uh, on the second interview. So don't quote me on that. But um, it's just so amazing how disheartening it is about death. I only cried for the people that I lost when I got out of Scientology. I had a complete heart open up and an explosion of emotions that had been suppressed for like 33 years by the time I got out. So I didn't feel anything when people died. It didn't mean anything. A Scientology funeral is just like they're going to the next level. They're happy um they go on forever and it's just the most weird fucking thing a scientology funeral especially because marissa was kind of high profile because of the people that she had surrounding her so you're going to hear her talk about how osa operatives like fucking men in black were actually at the funeral surveying her well my sister married into a prominent in Arizona, and the minister was the grandfather. They're all Scientologists on, on my nephew's side of the family. So there's this whole book by L. Ron Hubbard for births, deaths, marriages. Uh, I don't know the name of the book, but it's like a minister type scenario. And he was reading from that book. Um, but I, from what I saw and from what I witnessed, the traditional ceremony, and I think because my nephew died so tragically and there was some media attention about it, the tradition was to cover it up and pretend it never happened and not mention Scientology at all. Um, but again, you know, he was cremated. I think that's standard procedure. Most Scientologists want to be cremated. They don't want to be buried because it's your body and they want to just get rid of their body completely. They don't want to be stuck in the ground. That's what I've heard from you know, most Scientologists. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I got to experience, I, I don't know if, I, I don't think OSA shows up to every Scientology funeral, but they, they did for this one, and that was really strange. Do you know the name of the actual OSA people that approach you? No, I remember what she looked like. I mean, they all were the same outfit. They didn't tell us. Along the same lines, uh, for a funeral, were you encouraged not to be vocal, not to cry out loud? Oh, yeah, that's some other thing. I, I forgot to mention that. But my sister was crying profusely because it was her son that died, and she had to get tons of auditing afterwards and intensives to just run it out as they say you have to run out all of your emotions so that you no longer have charge over the situation mental charge you, you just have to flatten it out to where you don't care and for me i you know was crying and i would hear people in the background you know, uh scientologists that have been around for a while and they would tell us you know you know stop being banky you're being griefy you're being banky Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, your bank is your mind. Like the, the, and there's a part of your mind called your bank that stores negative emotions like sadness, grief, anger, jealousy. So yeah, they have some really funny terms that they use. Are you encouraged not to have any emotions? Because my experience, I'm local here, and I've had dealings with people. She's asking if she's in, if are you encouraged not to have any emotions? I'm not sure if you can hear the questions being answered. Or asked. They always meet not zombies, but they were kind of on that level. There was no humor, there was no, it was pretty flat line. Is that pretty much? Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can be happy and joyous if you're getting wins from the courses you're taking. <laughs> so, not the real world, it seems like there's no laughing, no, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, this is a whole different ball game here. I mean, this, I'm like, holy cow. It is the, probably one of the most disturbing experiences seeing this whole flag compound and watching busloads of younger people. Yeah. It looked like a lot of them were from Latin America. So I don't know if that's Scientology's latest game is they're going to different like third world countries and recruiting kids. I saw a lot of that. And that's what it looked like to me and just very 
uniform, you know, obviously they're, they're uh, outfits, but I'd say a uniform code of thinking, you can tell, it, and that's why now I understand why people are comparing it to North Korea, because yeah. it is very North Korean-like. Very, uh, it's very sad. And I actually have two uh, people that are friends of my family that joined Sea Org about 10 years ago as a mother and son, and we haven't heard from them since. It's been 10 years, I, I don't know where they are. They're floating around here somewhere, but I don't know. Is your sister still in the church? Uh, it's sort of a mystery as to what happened. I mean, she was one of those people that would just eat, drink, and sleep. Scientology. I mean, she's the epitome of somebody who's really brainwashed in it. And she's not the EP anymore. She has no part of the, the Phoenix Org. My understanding is because my mother was declared. Also, I, I think people she started associating with would be considered DBs, degraded beings, downstaff people. Uh, DB stands for like a degraded being where you're. I don't know, it could be like a drug addict or a criminal. So they have these really insulting names that they have for everything. But she won't talk about it. That is what's so weird. I'm not really close to her. I, I never have been. She's my half-sister. Uh, but she just acts like it never existed. She will not talk about Scientology. I, I think maybe because they told her to not disclose why she's no longer a part of it. So to this day, I have no idea why she's not a part of it. I don't think it was voluntarily on her own. I just think that she can't be a, a part of it anymore, just like my mother. Even though they still send my parents 20 things in the mail every week asking them to join the staff. <laughs> and my mom has to remind them all the time if they call. And my mom says, you realize you're talking to an SP. I've been declared a suppressive person. Why are you calling me? And they still keep calling. And I, I don't know. They're talking about the like Illuminati pyramid and shit. That's what this lady's asking. I don't know if you caught that. We are going to go into the signs and symbols of Scientology because it's quite interesting. To not disclose why she's no longer a part of it. So to this day, I have no idea why she's not a part of it. I don't think it was voluntarily on her own. I just think that she can't be a, a part of it anymore. Just like my mother. Even though they still send my parents 20 things in the mail every week asking them to join the staff. <laughs> and my mom has to remind them all the time if they call. And my mom says, you realize you're talking to an SP. I've been declared a suppressive person. Why are you calling me? And they still keep calling. And I, I don't know. <laughs> I know that's super hard to hear, guys, but she's asking about the pyramid symbol, the Dianetic symbol, and the eyeball um, at the top of the pyramid. A big pyramid with a big eye on it. What is the meaning of what does it represent? The pyramid. Let's see. It was like a pyramid. It was like a third eye. I don't remember a third eye being on the third eye. I remember it was just a big eye, and it was like a pyramid. Yeah, I could probably take that. I'm referring to the Dianetics pyramid. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And they had an eye on the center, and it was so freaky, you know, because the bride and groom were sitting there, and our priest, and the clergyman, and it was on the head table, and right on top of the backstage was this big eye. It was kind of freaky. I don't remember the eye, but doesn't the pyramid represent? 
represent ARC? I think so. Like the ARC it's triangle. Yeah. They have many triangles. The Dianetic symbol, the ARC triangle. I showed it in the video that call, called Charles Manson and O.J. Simpson share their wins in Scientology. If you want to see more of the symbolism of what they're talking about here, but there's a lot of symbolism in Scientology. The lightning bolts, the Sea Org symbol, all of it means something, and we'll go into that. Maybe it's the dollar symbol on it. Well, they laugh, but I mean, where do you think he got the symbol? L. Ron Hubbard was an occultist and he was massively, massively into Crowley. You guys are going to be surprised when you see how much of Scientology is based on Crowley when we get into season three, because it's, um, I'd say it's 95%, including starting everything at level zero, the, um, what Dianetics is based on, the birth engram, the magical memory is what it's called in Crowley. The uh, Scientology equivalent would be the time track. That's all your past lives. 95% of what Scientology is at its core is rips directly from uh, Crowley. They're talking about the subliminals and stuff. That's another video for another time. But okay, so Marisa, God bless you for coming on. Uh, I don't do religion, so don't come at me for that. But you know what I mean? It's just really cool. It's, I'd love. It's, <clears throat> it's a long story with Marisa. Like I said, we go way back and I know her history and she uh, she has so much more to share. So we'll go over the. Uh, Jesus, we have 18 pin questions, so I'll try to blaze through these guys and then we can um, call it a night. But just what a what a great time hanging out with you with everybody. Um, let me see the settings. Also, if the settings suck on this thing and you guys that the background is distracting or anything's wrong with this, just let me know in the comments and uh, we can not do this shit. Okay, so what do we got here? Marilyn, how you doing? Uh, I don't know why I had that starred. Hang on a second. But that doesn't diminish your, your comment. It, it was just for somebody else. Okay. Can you ask her? Okay, yeah. Guys, if you don't mind, any questions that you have for Marisa at all, we're definitely going to do a part two. She's loosened up too, and she has a lot more to share. So if you wouldn't mind, could you put those in the comments, any questions that I'm not able to cover here that are directed at her? So definitely not Osa. Can you ask her what she thinks really happens with Arnie, really happened with Arnie and his website after his death? Yes, I definitely want to ask her that. That's a great question. And she has something to say on that. Um, okay, I guess I didn't unstar that. Um, Pat Ray. I could be wrong. Feel free to prove me wrong to the point of humiliation. Laugh out loud when I was on ZDT's channel. Oh, this guy again. Pursuing the post. Blah, blah. Hey, guys, listen. I just blocked him like shortly after the interview. You know, we learned from uh, narcissistic psychopath HG Tutor. Once you know, you go. So, you know, one of the reasons I did that interview is to give him a chance to speak. I'll talk to anybody, dude. Karen Gailey Carrier can come on here. Anybody can come on here at all. I, I would like to talk to everybody. But the thing is, it's like if you... um. I kind of moved on because I have a bunch of other content and shit that I'm working on. So that guy wasn't even in my, as they would say in Scientology universe, but I keep hearing not as much. Part of that doing that interview was to get people to stop emailing me about this guy. Cause it's like, look, dude, if you don't like what he's doing, um, just don't give him any, uh, as HG tutor would call it fuel. That's the emotional reaction that you get or that the narcissist gets by feeding off of the attention. So literally if you don't give him any attention or if you suspect he's a narcissist or if you're dealing with a narcissist in your life once you know you go get out stay out it's that simple i blocked him and uh i just went on with my life it's as simple as that now yeah he'll do a video on me tomorrow and all this shit i can't wait um but i won't watch it i don't give a fuck i just don't care like i said you know free speech everybody can say what they want what was bothering me is all the people getting wrapped up in that you know the degraded daughters and this and that it's like it's like this war going back and forth and that's exactly what he wanted uh, in my opinion that's just my two cents um, so skip that or we, I, whatever. It's just a comment about him. Um, there are lots of stories that this woman is a drug abuser. Yeah. Corpse, by the way, corpse sent me like 10 bucks or maybe 20 bucks on, um, the coffee thing. I appreciate it, my man, but it, I don't, and I also, I don't know if this is Tony or not, but, uh, who knows, right? You can never tell who somebody is. So I don't live overly paranoid, 
but this guy's been going off in the chat. Um, so who knows? It could be him or whatever, but perhaps I got uh, the little $20 in the coffee pot to rope me in. But like I said, I don't have to be roped in. I'll talk to anybody. So thanks for that, Corpse. Um, JP Hanks, question. Who in the chain of command in the Sea Org can order a PI to look into someone? That would probably be at the Office of Special Affairs. Um, you know, Mike Rinder was the head of that for 22 years. So he and Marty, you know, these would be the, these would be the kind of people in the intelligence apparatus at the top of the Scientology pyramid. Everything's kept compartmentalized. So even those people doing those operatives, everything is kept separate from everybody else. Until you get out of Scientology and study it from the outside, you can't even make sense of your experience, even when you get up to the top of that pyramid. And that's when the PIs are hired. And the very stuff that we went into yesterday about Flo Barnett and stuff, we haven't even started to cover the suspicious uh, suicides in Scientology. There's a lot of those um, to come. Uh, building a case for that they cover up murder. And it's not a suggestion. If you if you spend enough time looking into it, or even if you look into Victoria Britain's uh, loss of her son, Kyle Brennan, which I linked in the last uh, video, you can start to get an idea that this is a pattern with Scientology. And, and to suggest that they don't actually murder people is false, I would suggest, because what they do is they use several lev levels of buffering. So it's not like, you know, Marty's going to go out necessarily and, and murder someone. It would be the dirty PI. It would be the the lowly cop. It, it would be all the stuff that we talked about in that video the other day. And also, um, people asked what special project L meant in that last video. It was read, I read out an excerpt from Jesse Prince's book um, called The Expert Witness. Special project L, the one that was ordered to handle flow, was Marty fucking Rathbun. Uh, I don't know if you guys got that or not, but it's there in black and white in Jesse Prince's book, suggesting, or more than suggesting, that if Marty didn't directly murder uh, that person, uh, which I, I have no idea if he did or not, he was the one that was ordered by David Miscavige to handle the Flo incident, uh, Flo Barnett, that Shelly Miscavige's uh, mother, and that Jesse didn't have to worry about it. It was going to be handled by Special Project L. And that is Marty Rathbun. So he uh, got it handled. And I, I that's all I can say. I mean, we can speculate um, how that was done and what was done. But Marty Rathbun was Special Project L. Um, the next one. Denver, Steva, what's up, man? Not a fan of the restream options. Do they let you upload your own royalty-free music? Yeah, they do, man. Um, they do. I guess I just have to find some better presets. Excuse me then are on here so i'll look into that my man jp hanks um was that the house fire chris shelton was around for i can't comment on that my man because i don't have enough information marisa can and uh again if you wouldn't mind and you don't forget could you please leave that in the comments because uh i don't always watch these i don't have time to watch the videos back guys very often so if you leave them in the comments i'll know exactly what to take up for part two and i'll ask her that because there's something to say about that Okay, that's that one. We're almost done here. I feel like I'm Aaron sitting here, you know, minus the super chats or whatever. I did, I never liked this kind of thing, but it's cool to hang out with you guys uh, late at night and uh, and just actually answer some questions here. Geez, Doug, you know you're going to feel the backlash for daring to speak out against zero deep thinking. Yeah, exactly. But what backlash? Uh, like I said, you just block and you ignore. I have a respect for your refusal to use science by anyway. Yeah, man, guys, I lived through Scientology. I died a long time ago, like I said, um, which removes fear. This It's just like funny to watch this, dude. Um, anyways, philosophy. Doug, do you think the cult is protected at a higher level as it's unbelievable that they are able to continue with such uh, so much evidence of abuse? Absolutely. And like I said, that's what the channel's about. And we'll be going more into that. Why the hell do you think they're still there despite all the shit that they uh, have been... They have a whole criminal history that would suggest they're perhaps being protected. I haven't heard the fire story. We will get to that, Darlene. I don't even want to say what's being suggested. I don't I don't want to keep you guys in the mystery, but I don't want to spread any rumors. So I'll let somebody who knows, uh, Marisa, talk about that. Corpse, um, yes, that is the story. That is the story she reached out to tell others about that. Yeah, even if she I don't I don't know, but even if she does use drug use, what do you who cares? What I mean, I smoke pot. What are you trying to smear somebody? And you don't have any proof of that anyway. So it's kind of a shitty thing to say about someone unless you can back it up. And even then, who gives a fuck? Um 
Amy Jean, did you have to pay a bunch of money to be audited just because they were crying at the funeral? Yeah, sometimes if, um, okay, I'll get a little personal here. Let me take a drink of water. For anybody following the ongoing saga in my story, my mom and I have been communicating and I got to talk to her on the phone for the first time in at least a decade, um, about a week ago. I keep a distance from my mom because I'm under no delusions that um, about the upbringing I had, let's just say that. But at the same time, you know, my dad, who was an OT8. Oh, I hope I don't fucking break down here. All right, let me just give me a minute. Ah. Um, I haven't even actually been able to process or, th or think about it because I've just been too busy. But I have a feeling one of these weeks, I'm just going to kind of break down and really start tearing up because you know the whole tragedy of Scientology my dad left this world in March at the beginning of March of this year as an OT8 and we never had any kind of re of, re of a resolve uh, I've talked about it previously so it won't bore you but my mom is hurting she just lost her best mate of like 50 years they happen to be born on the same birthday too they're four exactly four years apart and they were in love with each other and she's really sad because um, she's missing him. And it caused us, believe it or not, to actually be able to speak for the first time ever. And slowly but surely, she told me what happened to my pops and um, kind of how Julie's doing. Julie's my sister and how her kids are doing and the, how they're in medical school. And I mean, I missed I missed um, my sister's kids growing up because I couldn't stand to watch them being indoctrinated. Plus, I was getting ostracized from the family when I was waking up and having a breakdown. It was a whole disaster. Um, so a long story short, I was worried if my mom, you know, is going to get roped into Scientology and have to go get a grief session or something, you know, because dad passed. I, the first thing I thought of was a Scientology is going to grab her down to get a session so that they can delete the emotional charge and make her into a hypno hypno robot again, business as usual. But when I talk to her and I still have to learn more and there's certain things I probably won't say um, about my mom because, you know, it's, it's private or whatever. But she um, she told me that me and my she told me that her and my dad actually had backed away from Scientology a few years ago. I didn't press her because I didn't even want to talk about Scientology. It, she originated it. I was just told her, I'm, I don't give a fuck what happened. I'm so happy to talk to you and hear your fucking voice um, after all this time. So um, it was just really good to talk to her, man, and just like hear how she's doing and get an assessment on, is she does she have a little bit of amnesia? Is she in pain? Is she, I wanted to know if she was in Scientology. I figured that, you know, they would be. They never contacted me. But much to my surprise, she kind of originated that and said, yeah, you know, we were kind of looking into other, or at least my mom was, looking into other churches. She was thinking about going down to some other church or whatever. And this is unheard of in, in a deeply Scientology family like mine. So the I didn't squeeze too much information out of her yet, and I'm sure I'll learn more. But I couldn't believe it when she said that dad and my mom were not getting hounded by the church every day, that they had kind of pulled away. And I still want to hear more details about that. The whole thing's so fucking weird. Like, I don't know why they wouldn't have uh, reached out. You know, my mom is still a kind of a program Scientologist, I think, talking to her. But um, the way that my dad left the conversation, it was pretty brutal where it convinced me that he definitely was in Scientology. But uh, again, I don't want to discuss it in too much detail because I talked about it elsewhere and I feel like I'm rambling. But let's just say we had an email communication uh, shortly before he passed, which was the best I can hope for. And it was some resolve, but it would have been nice for him to tell me, you know, that Perhaps he wasn't as involved in Scientology as uh, I thought he was. Sorry for the ramble. Next question. Jay Dice, how are you, my friend? Um, do they go so far as to remind people that they are only related in this lifetime when people lose a family member? It would be so sick, but consistent with how they see things. Yeah, that's the general indoctrination um, just automatically at a certain level of Scientology. And uh, let me just make sure I get this. Do they go so far as to remind people? Yeah, they might. I mean, you don't need to be reminded. You know that you're infinite beings. You know that uh, family is just some little game that you're playing in this lifetime. And that's how that's how cold it really is while thinking that you're actually being spiritual and loving. Uh, it's a complete dichotomy. I hope that answers your question, Jay Dice. 
Bo Beans. Question. I believe Z this guy again. See guys, just ignore, right? I I believe ZDT is simply a grifter who causes chaos in fairly niche and smaller internet communities uh, as a jumping off point. Yeah, he's he. I think he's a troll. And, and when we get Marisa back on there, the problem is, uh, you know, she has some information I think that she'd like to share. But even talking about the guy, it's just what's the point, you know? But let's just say that he uh, he definitely was trolling. Um, JP, can't wait for you to get my email. JP, I responded to everybody recently, so I'll go back through and see if I missed yours, but I don't recall an email. Uh, maybe if it's not too much, you could resend it, or I will go back through them and uh, check that out. By the way, my email address to contact me is dbnc, that's days but not confused, dbnc Kramer, K-R-A-M-E-R, at gmail.com. And even though you can't put a clickable link in the description box for the email, in all the description boxes, that's the thing that you hit and pull down the information on the video. At the bottom, there's um, my email, Instagram, and Facebook, and you can always contact me there. And same thing with, um, yeah, lady, I did I not respond? Or sometimes I get backlog my friends and I just can't. But lady, I'll definitely check for yours again too because I thought I actually got up to date the other day on that. Two more guys, then we're done. Dude, I want you to elaborate more on what you mentioned. Yeah, the Chris Shelton thing. Someone please leave that in the comments so we can uh, be reminded to ask Marisa. Last one. Um, Jay Dice. Do Scientologists go so far as you're minding people? That, oh, yeah, we already got that one, right? Okay, guys. So thanks for joining us. And what a fucking night. Two hours and 32 minutes. Marisa, I hope you're having a good night. She's probably sitting on the couch watching this shit going, thank God. But uh, anyways, I really appreciate you, Marisa, for sharing your story. And um, hopefully that flag down video that you guys watched, that's that's her story, man. And that's that's what she lived that we barely got to get into. So my friends, have a good night. And uh, we'll see you on the